You are now live on channel eight and YouTube. Great, uh, good morning. Time is now 8.30 a.m. I'm Chairman Mike Curry and I'd like to call this annual joint budget workshop to order on this 12th day of March, 2022. Please rise and join me for the pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Glad to see everybody uh, on uh, this kind of warming up sa uh, Saturday. Bob, unfortunately, I think that there might be some uh, snow in the forecast today. Yeah, again, <laughs> what a weekend. <laughs> no, um, we before we begin, I'd like to state for the record that not only are we being streamed live on TC TV cable station eight in our YouTube web platform, but this morning's recording will be available for later viewing on our YouTube channel. Uh, this morning, uh, we've got, this is a, as I said, this is a joint uh, budget workshop. Uh, we do have a quorum for our select board. Um, over to my left, your, your right on the screen, uh, you will see that we've got uh, members of the advisory committee. Um, good morning, John. Well, Unfortunately, uh, just uh, due to events, you don't have a quorum today, but um, thank you for being here. And, and um, you know, this, we're not looking to make any decisions. As I, I'll say in, in a couple of minutes, um, this is a living document. Uh, we're definitely probably not going to finalize things today. That's the whole point of why we're here today. So thank you for coming and coordinating with us. Uh, as always, the, the agenda for this morning has been set no later than 48 hours out by law. It is publicly available at the official source for town information, templetonma.gov. Now, if anyone is following along at home, um, I want to make sure that you understand the document that we're using today is, what are we, 327? 300, you know, three, over 300 pages. It's a budget document that you will find right on the, the, the front page of uh, the town website. Um, you'll see it, right? I think it's maybe the second announcement. Click on that, click on it again, and you look at the PDF and you can follow along with us. Uh, an important thing about that document that we'll go through today, I will try as best I can and uh, feel free to jump in if, if you need to, uh, to share page numbers or specifically what page that if you have a question about something, that way anyone following along at home uh, knows exactly where we are within the book. And if you have a question about like the 5100 account, just to kind of frame it like that so everyone uh, understands what they're talking about. Um, Let's see, um, we are in a workshop today. I don't, you know, we have a set agenda. We're gonna take lunch at uh, approximately noon time, uh, in which case the TCTV live stream will, uh, will stay up. We'll just have a placeholder while everyone um, has a nice lunch uh, together. And then uh, this afternoon, um, this afternoon, uh, based on how the cadence of the day goes, we may go to three o'clock. We may be a little bit earlier. Um, last year we were on Zoom and we went later. So uh, just be prepared for that as well. Uh, at any time, if we need if uh, if we need a bathroom break or something like that, please just let me know and we can take a short recess. Um, TCTV, does that sound? I did. I'm kind of popping that on you right now. That sounds we acceptable. Take it. Yeah. Okay. Um, public participation and comment is still possible via the chat section of the live stream on YouTube. I may not be watching it, but if any uh, if anyone else uh, follows along, if there is a a, a note out there, uh, a question or otherwise something that we may be missing, uh, uh, I, I will allow addressing those comments. We are using Zoom today. We don't have anybody. Um, we don't have anybody participating. But probably the best thing I can say about the Zoom stream is if we do need to bring up uh, a section of the budget book on the big screen, not only is that good for us because we see it on, uh, on the big screen, but those uh, following along at home, or if they're not following along, can see uh, the item that we're talking about. Okay, um, so that's, that's the framework for today. Um, what got us to this process, and I'm going to go into introduction so everybody knows everybody and um, people uh, new to um, 
it's new to the budget meeting, Washington at home will know who's actually uh, here today. The select board had a, a retreat. We set our goals. Those goals were then interpreted into budget guidance uh, from the town administrator. That budget guidance was used um, uh, along with one overarching um, methodology, which was a level funded budget this year. Uh, so the difference with that is that the town uh, administrator gave a cap or what, what to fund to, and the department heads worked within those constraints. The year prior, it was level funded, I'm sorry, level service, where you start off with adding the services and then uh, pr proposing your budget based on what capabilities that you're going to offer within your department. Um, the, the budget guidance, the, the department heads then uh, report back to the town administrator. The town administrator then interprets all of those documents and prepares the 300 plus page budget book that you have in front of us. Um, as, as Jeff and I uh, reminded people when we uh, issued this a couple of weeks ago, this document is not only a bunch of numbers, it is a great reference document. Uh, a lot of hard work goes into um, the documents, the, the references, the explanations, um, a town organization. So that uh, the whole, it's a holistic budget document that allows us to have a, a good idea of what we're trying to do for the taxpayers. Finally, um, the, uh, the budget is presented to the select board as we are the, um, the agents of it. We will put it on a warrant once we finish all the, the budget guidance and all the work that we're gonna do today and in the next couple of weeks. Um, so that's what brought us here today. Any questions about that or any want to add any emphasis on how we got to this morning? Great intro. The only thing I was thinking of is we're filling out to the new wage and compensation study descriptions. I noticed in this book there was a, a draft of mm -hmm. what we're looking to accomplish going forward on the uh, equity pay instead of merit pay. Yeah. I'm going to quote one of my uh, favorite movies. Uh, the Postman came out at the same time as the Titanic, so never, no, no one saw it. And he said, uh, stuff is getting better. Stuff is getting better all the time. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin Costner, for that little joke. Okay, um, so what, what I'd like to do is uh, start with Cam. Um, um, just uh, your, your position, um, anything you really want to share. I'm not, I, we've got all day to do that, so if you... Uh, you want to give any kind of background or anything? I'm, I'm good with that. We'll, we'll start with Ken, go right all the way around the table, ending up with uh, Mr. Sozik, which is our first group for today. Sure. And um, just for my knowledge, where are the cameras exactly? So we got two there, one. No, one there. The, so the, the, yeah, the owl. Um, thanks for making that. So the owl provides all it snaps to wherever it hears sound. Okay. And um, but the microphones throughout the room work as well. Okay. okay. The two on the two. Yep. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah, Cameron Ports, former selectman, and I'm uh, I think the secretary for the advisory committee. I'll keep it short and sweet with just that. Good morning. John Catalyst, uh, chairman of the advisory committee, uh, past uh, chair of the board of selectmen, and uh, happy to be here. Uh, Noble Francis, co chair of the advisory committee. Uh, this is my first time to sponsor. Happy to have you. Uh, Jeffrey Bennett, a member of the Town Board of Selectmen, uh, former member of the advisory committee, and always fun to be here on Saturdays. <laughs> Harry Griffiths, former swimming instructor and um, well, water safety instructor and clerk of the select board. Great. Um, good morning. Thank you. Uh, Mike Curry, uh, select board chair um, since 2019, I think, is when we came on. Yep. Yeah. And um, this is definitely not my first budget year. Uh, I enjoy the process and I'm looking forward to today. Tim Toth, Board of Selectmen, currently serving as the Vice Chair. Uh, first in-person live meeting. I prefer this much over Zoom the way we did it last year. And yes, it was a very long day. <laughs> Adam Lamontine, Town Administrator, uh, former resident of Chicopee, now um, resident of Baldwinville. The man behind the curtain. Yeah. Oh, Steve, <laughs> Steve Castle, TCTV. <laughs> Holly Young, executive assistant in the select board office. Justice Graves, an uh, administrative intern in the select board office. And our first briefer. Bob Sozik, 
uh, jump to the DBW director. I think we could probably jump right in. Wow, that was uh, highly effective. <laughs> it's going to be a good day. Good morning, Bob. Good morning, everyone. Um, I have my budget. It's in three sections. I believe we're going to start out with the highway, um, the buildings and grounds, and then the snow and ice. So on the highway on the 5106 for those following. Uh, I don't have page numbers, so that's okay. I'll help out. Um 5100 account on the highway. It's the yeah, personal account. Um uh, pretty straightforward. Uh everybody's uh step raise and predicted raise for seasonals are projected in that total, which we go by a um the step rate sheet and pass um, uh, quarter raises for the seasonal. I'm sorry, what was the step raise you said? Oh, we're cold. The union has, um, well, this is their contract going to be up, but they have step raises for each year. Okay, you said so it was on a quarterly basis they, they do steps or? No, yearly. Just annual. Okay. Yeah. And then once they renegotiate with another, hopefully they'll move seven. Step raises. Okay, and it's, um, I see there's the H2, H3, that's indicating the role, and then the step seven would be what grade they're at? Yeah, HEO is a heavy equipment operator, LEO is a light equipment operator, so close to the seasonal laborers. Okay, and so is step seven the highest step there is for personnel? For this year, yes. Okay, uh, just in general. So next year, is there a step eight that we'd be looking at? No, it'll be probably starting off from step one again. Okay. Re renegotiating that contract. Okay. So they'll be doing the steps over. Okay. Appreciate it. At least for the next one or three years. Sorry, Mr. Chairman, I should have addressed you first. Yeah, let, let, um, let's talk through. Um, I, I, I think the most effective thing that we've we done before, uh, we had Zoom before, so people put, put up hands. If you just want to, uh, if, if it's a, a simple question, if it's a concerted question, ask, ask to cut in. If it's just a clarification, I have no problem with someone saying, could you say that again, or just simple clarification. So that's that's how we can handle that. Thank you. Appreciate that, Mr. Chair, if I may. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Forks, the steps are part of the information we received when we did the wage and compensation study and how the positions were laid out. I'm not sure if you've fully seen or digested the document. The and it's just, it's something we've done. It's something that was needed for quite some time and we finally have gotten it moved forward. Um, if, what about what's the date for the wage and compensation study? I can pull it from the meeting minutes. What was the question? When we adopted the wage and comp study as presented, it was two months ago. Holly's getting it. Yeah. Okay. So it's a boundary driven uh, job description based on equity and not merit. So, it's, you know, and is they have to include ADA compliance. Okay. So people know if you're a step, this is what is expected of you. And if you want to move up the ladder, then you look at the next uh, description, job description. And if you have the qualifications, you can put in for that okay rather than merit it makes it fair across the board that makes a lot of sense thank you and holly will get you the information when she finds it is there uh, any other questions or? any other questions 5100 okay 5110 <laughs> Highway 5110, uh, the expense budget. Um, this is um, the uniforms and boots and glasses. Most of the stuff comes off the uh, contract, um, which is allowed for the first top portion. And then we also have a continuing edu uh, education on hydraulics endorsements, which is your uh, Hosting license, which is mandatory. You have to renew every two years. Conference and training, uh, DOT physicals, um, random drug testing. Uh, that's, we usually have, a, we have a company that comes out and they pick two or three guys every quarter. So it's working out good. 
and everything's been on the upside and negative. Uh, Massachusetts Highway Association, Mass Arborist Association, and the Worcester County Highway Association. And that pretty much stayed the uh, same as from last year. Mr. Chairman? Yep. Um, all right, as far as tool allowance here for $500. I, I was going to say that. I couldn't imagine buying tools with $500 for an entire department. Um, can you talk more about $500 in coverage for tools for highway department? Is that satisfactory or is? I'm Mr. interested Chair, as well. Like, may I? Yeah. Um, that five hundred dollars is for the mechanic. The mechanic. Most of our tools are supplied by the mechanic. Um, just have some tools. And this car to put in a couple of years ago, or maybe longer, if the mechanic burns out a tool like an air gun or something, it's an allowance for him to replace this tool that he's using for the town. Okay. No, not necessarily buying tools for the town. Okay. Uh, we do buy some tools uh, to do some stuff. No specialty tools. Is that a risk for the town if the mechanic were to find another job or win the lottery that we would no longer have tools? Well, it was replacing his tool he came in with. Right. So, but if we were to, if the mechanic were to leave, say, win the lottery night and he's no longer here, would we lose the tools? You, you would lose a lot of tools. I mean, and is in that, in your opinion, is that a risk for the town? Not not well, his employment status, well, but it's, rather it's a risk. Tools. We can always go out and buy as needed. Um, like last year, we got the smoke machine transmission flusher and stuff like that. So it's all on stay with the town. Okay. A big air gun, so we can change high of that town, higher lines, uh, more detailed specialty tools, more on motors and. Uh, breaks you know, and technology changes and the tool changes so often. Okay. You know, they put a different part and I get to buy this tool because it changes the design of it. So he turns out and buys that tool. So, yeah, we, we get like two sides to that. So, adequate funding and then potentially um, solvable, like th that risk part with, um, I could see a policy if. If someone had employment in a town for a long time, you know, like they, they were vested, they, they, that they quote unquote earned the, the tools from, from just from what I'm hearing from the, the description, that that is a better situation than like a, the situation where, you know, you, you're employed for a year, you get an entire set of tools or replenishment of, of your tools and then and then you leave or otherwise, but potentially maybe a policy. So you reduce that risk. Um, but I, I think that's a good point. I, you know, I saw that kind of evolving in your just in your uh, question. Yeah, I see it almost as it, this is a capital item, right? Where we have tools for the DPW to satisfy. Therefore, we don't have employees owning tools in the DPW rather yeah. than tools at Templeton. But there's risks associated with that, right? I mean, if these tools go missing, right. they break, and so on and so forth. So I'm not sure the answer that would be more you as the administrator for it, but. It's, I think it's a comp, like, I mean, I, I have a friend that's a mechanic and he has a, an incredible tool set. I don't know if his garage gives him an allowance or otherwise, but I, I imagine that's the same kind of situation. It's value added to make sure that, you know, the line on it is definitely legit to me because you, the value added is that we have good, good quality tools working on our town equipment, but at the same time, you don't want like the back end, like losing a bunch right. of tools. Right. And if you pay your mechanic a decent wage. Yep. Be better off a chance of having them stay than mm -hmm. looking forward. This yeah. is how it's been since I came. The majority of the tools are supplied by the mechanic. Okay. And I actually work with Kyle getting this in a little extra incentive form. Um, mm -hmm. He doesn't abuse it. He probably does one tool a year. Like you say, well, I'm not questioning about bringing it down. Um, I always want, I, I see $500 for tools. If anything, I think that's low for tools. No, if we, would, if we had a tool up for the highway department and supply the tools, like you're talking about, people, you would have to have a tool crib, you know, mm -hmm. make sure stuff's going to be turned out, laid out, somebody oh, yeah. taking it home, 
Um, it's actually working out so far. Almost the first responsibility to make yeah. tools go back and that they're not lost or right. stolen. So it's, 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 it's a whole moment having. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, John and Terry Linton. Well, I, my my question would be like, uh, you know, obviously it would be classified almost like a durable item. So do we have a list of those those tools that belong to the town? Yes, we have what we own. Okay. It's always sounding good. It's not snowing yet. So. No. He took a picture of himself. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, usually it's needed. In action. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks for taking the first one. <laughs> that was the great. They're interrupting me. So. <laughs> that, that, that's all I have. But I just want to make sure the policy thing I really like, uh, having a listing of what tools that the town does own, uh, I think would be uh, an awesome thing to have as well. Yeah, no, I can, uh, we like our equipment. We have an inventory list. Back when Doug was here, we like it all the days for when they should be replaced. We can do that with the tools as well. Just a point, just a point of information too. Um, Bob has a lot of internal procedures mm -hmm. at his department as well. That he administers himself. So I just want to clarify that as well, just so you know, Bob. Um, he, he certainly looks over everything and has a good list, and he's actually taken a, a huge step forward in keeping inventory and everything else. So yeah. he's one well, of the departments that's two way communication too. I mean, they're giving us information, but like I, I, I love the fact that we've identified, I mean, identifying risk and, and trying to make sure that we're managing uh, the funds. Mm -hmm. It's a two way street. You know, Bob could say, "Wow, that's a great idea." Go back and actually tweak something he has to say, "I didn't, I didn't think of that." With the price Sorry. of metals, I'm just wondering if $500 is enough, you know, tools of metal. And oh, the supply chain. A lot chain of metals are up to are $26 a pound. So, um, and the other thing is the diagnostic tools. Right now, do we have any uh, diagnostic tools for the new? I was thinking of the new trucks coming in. Are they computers and everything? Yeah, everything is computer and like the uh, newer big trucks and like the police cruisers, it's not the same. Computer, it's a different setup, and a lot of uh, like Caterpillar. You you can't get this off of a Caterpillar. You have to have Caterpillar um, come in this whatever. But the simple troubleshooting stuff, as far as sensors and stuff, we do have a, a handheld computer. As far as um, notes or action items from the meeting, so this is a potential uh, opportunity that I think that we're talking several people have now said it might be something that we add, you know, if there is an opportunity to add funds. Um, note taking wise, uh, Justice and Holly, how are how are we doing note taking like action items or otherwise? Are, are you guys prepared to do that? I'm not sure what you're So we just identified an opportunity, something we could go back. I, you know, if everyone's circling in their book to say maybe talk, maybe uh, Bob uh, needs more money in for the retreat. So that's a an opportunity it's for an action item. Are you guys? Keep it. It, it's keep a, a it's called a yeah, budget a list. Budget do outs. Yeah, just keep. Do yeah. Outs. Uh, last time, chair kept it, but if you could start a budget do out sheet. Sure. Awesome. Thanks for thanks for that. Great. First catch of the day. Um, are you all set? Yep, thanks. Just a general comment, Mr. Zosik, feel free to back me up. As far as the mechanic bringing tools, this is kind of the industry standard. We look at the CLNS garage, we look at Aiken Automotive, we look at the local car dealerships in surrounding towns. Mechanics, sometimes hot positions, time to time. They generally take their tools with them, bring their tools with them as they come in. But when they leave, that's their property. It goes with them. I, I believe this falls in line with the same thing. I love the idea we have a provision to assist and augment. You know, you break something, you're absolutely right. It's got to be replaced. I get that. I fully support that. Okay. Else? Uh, any, no. any other questions? 51, 10. Uh, okay. Different page on new forms and otherwise 5200. 5200, uh, as you see in front of you, it's uh, expense budget, uh, pre employment testing, uh, inspection for the lift every year. Uh, we did cut out the painting of the center lines for FY23. They will be done this spring from uh, carried over from last year, uh, but we took that out. Um, flutter and vehicle inspections, radio maintenance, basically all the stuff that's mandatory that needs to be done. 
fuel tank tests and that for the yard, the gas and diesel tanks, um, wheel alignments, fuel pump maintenance. That's uh, down the road. We're gonna have to start looking at replacing that. Um, those tanks and pumps at some point. So there's no emergency right now. Um, so it's going to be a big expense. Vehicle towing, uh, tree cutting, um, and advertisements for tree herons and specialty vendors. That, uh, that this budget did get cut pretty good to make ends meet. Are those a lot of those fluctuating? During the year, like the uh, legal advertisement for tree hearings, does that fluctuate? Yeah, you don't know when that can happen or going to happen. It's, it could pop up any time. Mr. Sheriff, uh, can you clarify what equipment specialty thing there is? Um, specialty vendor is state line Mac, Dallas Mac. Um, so we have to send out that we, we don't have the computer uh, or, or the equipment to fix it, or it's beyond our uh, capability. Okay. Not having all the tools to fix it. Okay. Transmission we do all the summer. I think that you just don't want to do in house. Right. Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. Are we sure, Sam? Uh, I have a social one. First question. I, I, my second question is you have tree cutting, removal, and pruning. I, I don't see a line for uh, tree adding. Do we have a tree adding program? Ooh, a good one. Tree adding? We, huh. we, you figure when you take one down, you got to replace one, correct? Oh, right. I love it. Well, before the pandemic, I started to uh, do something on uh, Arbor Day and mm -hmm. clean up day. Uh, Seaman Paper was willing to work with me Excellent. and try to get the schools involved, but everything was. Was impossible to get everybody together. We do, I do buy a few trees. Oh, yeah, I plan one at the common last fall. Um, we do try to replace some of the trees in the common spaces. I would assume the town would have a policy on that. That's a good idea. Mr. No, Chair. but there is direction. Um, that has been on the select board goals in the past, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I put it on <laughs> so um, I, I'd have to, to see. Are you checking? Oh, turn right to it. Let me see if it's still on. What, the Mass Tree Water Association, we, right now, they have, you can buy seedlings, right? And they hand them out to like the fifth graders or whatever. You can buy as many as you want, right? And to start a tree at home, seedlings ain't going to make it on the website. Okay. They give it to the students and they plant the tree. Excellent. If there's a thing with parts and rec, in Marlboro, there's Galoni Park, and uh, some my cousin dedicated a tree, and so you can have treat to my parents, so you can have tree dedications. You know, when you start with seedlings, what is it, a gallon of water a day for three years to keep the seed once you're planting yeah, in the I mean, ground? Yeah, depends what the spring and the summer is. And yeah, you, you there's a lot of maintenance water to as well. you you raise them up. In rock, so you... yeah. My uh, On that vein, while Mike's looking up his, his right. thing, um, pollinator gardens are very uh, necessary. Have you heard of pollinator gardens? I heard of them. Yeah, yeah. going forward, necessary to keep the native entomology thriving. So opportunity uh, for for note takers, uh, just kind of relook Arbor Day activities in reference to um, the tree cutting and removal. So another opportunity. Great, thank you. Fifty two hundred. Any questions? Moving on with 5,400. Um, very much the supplies and uh, air on the vehicles and diesel and gas, um, office supplies, tires, all this stuff is gone up. Um, tires, gas, oil, I, I, they couldn't give us a, even a price. A lot of towns are already figuring in an extra 17 or 20% on top of what we're paying now 
for FY23 budgeting. Um, sweep of hydraulic lines and brooms and parts for the, the, the brooms and side brooms for the sweeper and hoses. Freeze, uh, antifreeze. Swipe everything that's gone up. Um, top uh, berm. Um, that's gonna go up. Uh, crosswalk tank, that's going up. That fluid is pretty much the same at the moment. What was the, the could you explain the lump sum disallowed? The lump sum disallowed was um, the amount that we took down the account um, based on what I did is I went through all the fiscal year, the end of the year, the previous year, and um, this this one we added more to um, that this was one of the accounts that I felt could be 199,000 Bob and I went back. So it was a top level disallow and you're basically getting the ball back over to, to Bob and now he's got to figure out how to cut 28. Yeah, I already increased a lot of these in for discussion with Adam, we made some more count, uh, cuts and that's what the disallow is. I mean, there's so much market volatility right now. Um, so I mean, Bob's going to do his best to uh, make this work. Um, but like I said, this is a substantial increase compared to past years, even with the lumps on this alone. Where is it going to hurt the most? I believe the mm -hmm. gas in the OR. Okay. I, I really do plan on coming back. I okay. I don't think it's going to be pretty. That was something where um, we, we do our best to budget for fiscal year 23, but with, you know, gasoline and everything else going up, this could be something that needs to be adjusted at the special town meeting. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's my overall, it is like, where is it going to hurt the most? And it's likely to come back in front of us. So. Tim, you had something? Yeah, this this plays right into it. Yesterday was a MMA uh, webinar that was presented for the town leadership, and we had our legislative team. They're in the midst of a cycle. Yesterday it was Worcester and Essex County. Senator Gobi was on with us. And this is a highlight that's coming in. The fuel concerns, the state understands, the state hears us. They're looking at the UGA, the Unspecified Governmental Grants Assistance Program, and they're trying to get that boosted a bit, but the bean counters at the state level have already identified heating and fuel oil costs as a problem, specifically DPW, public safety, just taking care of our buildings. They don't yet have the plan formalized. They see the problem and they're tagging the governor for some of the additional funding, some of the additional state ARPA. It's definitely a moving target, watch this space, but the takeaway at the end there is some light at the end of the tunnel and the folks we need to be raising our hands and jumping up and down a little bit are hearing us. How quickly are they going to be able to assist us? That remains the big question mark, but we are moving things in the right direction. So to your point, Mr. Zostik, yes, it's a problem, but yes, we have some attention at a high level in the state as well. So watch this space for further developments and we'll see how much more of an infusion we can get. Mr. Mm -hmm. Schultz was in mention of, I saw in the news somewhere that they were thinking of eliminating the gas tax. Was there any mention of that? Maybe they did that not matter. specifically discuss that yesterday. We can take that offline because there's pluses and minuses to considering that both state and federal levels and the impact that would cause down the road. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. Reviewing this budget document. Of the 300 plus pages, this is the one page that I thought that the figures were really out of whack. And I really think that we should go to town meeting with a you know, figure of $300,000. But then I don't think it will cover uh, his extra expenses. Fuel, my understanding is fuel is for not just the DPW, but other departments. Yeah, that's police, fire, seas, and so if, um, yeah, I, mean, I think he's really, you know, this is really I think three hundred thousand dollars. 
We feel very strongly. Okay. DPW um, 5400. All right. Does this uh, cover um, crack sealing? Would this apply for crack sealing being this? No. no. Is that coming out of the chapter funds? That's chapter money money. Now really has no extra money for a statue, which we should cut if I were doing that. Uh, put an extra 10000 away just for the hatching, because you can't use chapter on any money for pageant falls. It's going to be a minimum of 500 feet long. So, <clears throat> as far as crack ceiling is concerned, you can't do it with chapter 90s unless yes, it's 500 feet of stretch. But I, it has to get approved. Okay. I do like, a chapter 90 plan. I put a plan together, submit it to the select board, and the town administrator. They either yay or make the plan, then the page. Both for submit and charge it to us to mass power. They have to, they're changing all their ways now. Mm -hmm. um, yes. It's approved. You got to use the vendor out there. Good work. And maybe that we, they just changed it. We submit it again. They get approved for a reimbursement. Okay. And the town pays it and then mass power reimbursement. One follow up question for you. If we were uh, I see there's a line for cold patching here. You have 90 cold patches at $100 a piece. Um, is that that's the average cost of filling a pothole? No, it's just um, based on um, 90 tons of cold patch. Okay, and how many potholes would that cover? I don't think that'll be fair right now. It's not going to cover much. Let's say the size is different, but right? <laughs> um, no, that right. is on the weak side. Uh, one thing I will say, and, and this is a select board advisor to me, I'm sure you guys hear all the time how damn awful the potholes are in this town. Um, and so I think anything we can do to move that needle in that direction, I think if there was one thing that would curry favor, it's potholes. Well, no, no, curry on favor. potholes, there's <laughs> cold patch and pot mix. Um, I know there was discussion uh, not too long ago, but on potholes when the roads are wet and full of water. Yep. Yes, we use a cold patch because no matter what you use, it's that material is waste because it's going to blow right back out. We do have access to hot mix and drake it, but the weather's we're going to have because good weather. I can't have a snowstorm that goes and get a load of hot yep. top and the roads are still ice and what. So, Unfortunately, I think it's it, it's going to get worse. Uh, you know, I hate to drag drag a, a national issue into our our town budget initiative, but climate change. We've had so many sixty degree days and then snow, you know freezing in snow. Um, you know, I drive up uh, cross road. Cross road's got frost heaves all over the place. I know you've got signs up there. Um, that's a major driver for how how damn awful it has right. been out there, as as you had said. So it is something potentially look at um handling the rising tide of well like i said increasing pageant and pothole up to about 10 grand is going to be in the better side of templeton yeah um i hate to say it but i mean templeton at some point they're really going to have to step up and decide what they want to do with the roads understood mass uh chapter 90 monies 350,000. Lucky if you get yeah. one or two roads done. Yeah. Um, that's designed more for maintaining good roads like chip seal, crack seal, uh, stuff like that. We can't rebuild Chap uh, Templeton with 350,000. You're never going to see uh, the roads being yeah. done. A Adam's predecessor basically made, you know, hammered a home that point and basically said, we're not looking for trying to take care of all the high priority stuff, but basically trying to um lessen the, the the severity and you know we were basically going forget the language that he used but he basically said we're going to take a medium a medium approach um and, it, and we've been doing that for a couple of years and i and i do thank you for when you come and you you make your chapter your chapter 90 recommendations we understand that you got a, a you know one arm is tied behind your back and you oh, do yeah, the best you can. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult and a hard decision to do 
I mean, like I know you talked about Brooks Road the other day, and yep. that was in Chapter 90 plan two years ago. Right. But now there's development going over there. I'm not going to pay a road and have contractors cut into a new road unless the planning board building department want to say, you know, you can't build on this road for 10 years. Right. This, it just doesn't make sense to pay a road and dig into it. Right. So we went to an alternative and uh, go on kind of hold roads like that together. That's, it's, it's just going to keep getting worse. And like I said, I'm doing what I can with what I got. I can't yeah. snap my fingers and say I'm still mm -hmm. paving all these roads. But. So overall, uh, the, the note that I took um, as far as what Noel was saying is to basically say the 5400 account is another opportunity. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, Adam's looking down the table and saying, I don't know where you're going to find the money for all these opportunities that are identified. And this is the first department to come through. Right. Um, but I did take that note in, in the discussion items that are, are kind of propping that up. You know, so this time of the year, you know, what's going on a road that's very dangerous. Um, you can plow a road up itself. Yeah. And if you have a piece of road that takes out 100 feet of road, that's not, I can't use chapter 90 money because it's not 500 feet. So that 100 foot patch is probably going to cost three or four grand to do it right. And we don't have the equipment for it. John? Yeah, I, uh, vehicle tire, you get $15,400. Do you cover the fire, the DPW? Uh, I'm sure some tires are covered under you know, some type of contract or, but, and, that's, and police, correct? That's police highway uh, seeing as down on fire. Not fire. Okay. Well, I mean, I can probably one DPW big truck tire is probably about fifteen thousand, right? Well, I'll put a set of tires on a big truck. You're probably looking about five, six, seven thousand. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that's the talking all of I, all that that stuff to me. Now that Noel has gone big, um, it's all granular at that point. Yes, Everything in assume. here is 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 um, subject. You know that lump sum. He's got to go back and say, "Where am I making it?" And we're basically saying, "Holy cow, that, that whole that whole account is suspect." Right. So let's we can move forward with that. I think we had um, Terry, then Adam, and then Cam. Okay. I was just wondering what the difference between. Um, oh no, I got it. Um, hard back on the roads, hard back and cold and hot. Is that your question? Well, some roads are just, oh. um, <clears throat> I forgot the name of it. It slipped me off. You know, <laughs> you know some roads aren't even tired. They're just hot. Oh, regrind millings. Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? Regrind yeah. millings. That doesn't know. Yeah, the one down there, you on the way to your street. Yeah. On yeah. the right, that's regrind. Yeah. Yeah. Churchill? Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that can't do anything for the potholes. Yeah, we do. Oh, you do put regrinding. We put regrinds back in and compact them in. Yeah. We usually go through the private roads, the dirt roads, the regrind roads. Right now, it's we just plowed, so like I say, we created more damage than doing good. Yeah. On roads like that. Yeah, but something like that can't go for a paved road fill on a pothole. No, I mean we can patch it, but we'll use the same material that's in there to, if, to pave the whole road. Yeah, it can go on a chapter ninety plan. Yeah. But we've got paved roads that are worse. That's actually a better road than paved roads. Yeah. Thanks. And climate change is really because yeah. today you can't even sulk before it freezes because it'll just wa wash it off, right? Yeah. Adam? I um since we released this budget, uh to the select board and the advisory committee. I mean, obviously everything's changed and we've seen such a spike in gasoline costs and, and the like. Um, so my suggestion would be, because I, I delivered a level funded budget to both uh, the mm -hmm. select board and the advisory committee, any measures that we could find savings in or identify, then we could move those differences to this account because I, I don't That's disagree. Yeah. Correct. I don't disagree. Um, and we don't know where, where we're going to be come July 1 of of the when we hit this yeah. fiscal year. So anything we could see along the way, if we could identify that, and then we could put more into this account because I had to work with what I had with all the departments to give you the... Understood. And, and level funded, every, everything is going to seem dire at, at some severity. So once we identify 
those areas that both the committee and the board look at, then we can have discussions about priority. Um, you know, we can communicate back to you to say this is what we we think we should be prioritizing. Um, Cam, I think you said you're good. Anything else on 5400? Just if I may, real quick. Yep. Uh, just as a reminder for the, the chapter 90 money, uh, ever since Governor Baker has been governor, and I think even before him, uh, the yearly apportionment of chapter 90 money has been 200 million, except for 2015, it went to 300 million. And I think last month, uh, the governor filed a $100 million supplemental with chapter 90 money, which is bonded money, it's debt for the state. But, uh, and what that proportion will work out for the town if it makes its way, uh, I'm not sure off the top of my head, but it's been a steady 200 million for every year. And tell me if Pontotoc has been steady. Right. Or, or price of oil has been steady for or gone down over the years. So for the town to receive pretty much the same amount of money every year with the, all the costs going up. You're not even maintaining the roads. You, you're not going to maintain it. You're always losing ground every year. I think the estimate from the uh, Massachusetts Municipal Association is six hundred million dollars needed per year to maintain the roads, which cities and towns are responsible. I think the estimate is about seventy percent of the roadways in the state. Mm -hmm. Like this road out here, drive it. <laughs> you think you know? And Tumbling's not the only town that has bad roads, right. but just down from two way right here. That's a state road. Some of the town roads are in better shape than that one. Some are worse. Some are on the same footing. So he, he fighting an, an uphill battle, depending on Chapter Ninety money, which is funded about forty percent from the gas tax. And what is everybody working on the gas tax? Better mileage, less use of gasoline. Where's the future of Chapter Ninety money based on? The formula now. So he, he's in a tough spot. But all towns are in a tough spot with Chapter 90 money. Uh, it, there has to be a different funding source or sources if you want to make progress. Because he's just it's keeping, like low, keeping us above water. water. And he's doing the best he can with the, the funding he has. Yeah. It's just a fact of life. Thank you. I'd like to get some intel or some intelligence on what might come through. From the, at least the current administration and from the way of infrastructure, see if there any anything along the way. If, if there's a crystal ball answer to say there might be a supplement to Chapter 90 because of you know whatever federal program. Um, I wish I was more read up on it, but <coughs> it's a potential that we might be able to seize on. And it and it I don't. It's not going to be reoccurring money. It's going to be like one time or. You know, much like the ARPA money had like a window of time to do that. Right. Other other than other 5,400. Just Mr. Chair, <clears throat> clarity for the public when they hear, hear the 200 million, that's divided between all the towns in Correct. the state. So it's not. Yep. Mm -hmm. And just uh, for Mr. Chair, just a point to Jeff. Um, Baldwinville Road, uh, I live on it, so I drive it very frequently. That was redone six, seven years ago, I can't remember how long it is, but if you drive that road now, it's getting to the point of disrepair, right? And I don't know what the longevity of a life, uh, or the lifespan of the road should be, but where we're getting these cracks in there now, the frost seeds are gonna come up, we're gonna have to redo it again. I think that was part of the complete streets program when we did it, but I think that's really the root is that we're trying to get to that you were suggesting earlier with Carter is, we need to take care of the roads that we just did. If we let them fall into disrepair, it's yeah. going to cost us more money down the road. Extending the lifespan of the road is, is key for the roads that we redo. If we're just redoing these roads with the chapter 90 funds and then letting them go to you know, hell yeah. afterwards, what are we really doing? We're just getting in a cyclical pattern there. So taking care of the roads that we do, extending the lifespan, doing cold patch, hot patch, or um, crack sealing, chip sealing, that's you know, extending a life. Right. It's a lot cheaper to do that than to tear up the whole road and repay it or wait for chapter nine funds or right. wait for complete streets. And I think that's really the route that we're trying to a good point there. Um, it, it's uh, it's chestnut checkers. It's uh, you're, you're not going to just go in and, and fix a road. Bob needs to consider what else is going on with this road. Like you said, if they're going to cut into it, he's not going to redo a road that's that's got, you know, a ton of construction on it. 
Um, I wish we had that kind of answer for the guy the other night. But again, I, I explained to the, the gentleman that came and talked about Brooks Road. It's like, you bring the issue to us, let's do the research, and then we'll come back with a, a thought, uh, you know, not an off the cuff answer, but like a, a thought of one. All right, 5,400. I'm, I'm also uh, official clock watcher as well. Yeah, we're going to catch up here. Yes. Uh, 5,600 is on the highway. That's uh, for police details for us working on the streets, uh, being safe. Uh, which is never never enough because there's so much tree trimming and stuff I can do, but I don't have the money to keep putting uh, the detail out there. Uh, so we work with what we got. Um, any questions on that? Which one were you, were you just reading? Yeah. 5,600. 5, oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. I, was, I was looking at the right one. Okay. 5,700? 5,700 is um, the MS4, which we moved over from capital to the budget. Uh, in the middle, bridge, street sign replacement program. Um, it's real dump truck I put in for Boston Road um, appraisal work and uh, changing the, the footbridge on Stone Bridge or so footbridge possibly. And repairing the Main Street Bridge. This uh, this got moved to Opera. Any questions? Fifty-seven hundred. Move on to buildings and grounds. Buildings and grounds. Another fifty-one hundred. Uh, again, it's a Personal payroll. Um, this is all uh, non union. Um, and those wages are adjusted with a uh, review and uh, bring it forward to Adam to review. Oh, no questions? Oh, I'm sorry. And I know the two items you had uh, <clears throat> under the present minimum wage. Uh, it was be an adjustment made. Oh, and yes, yeah, so that those will be when they come back. That'll be yeah. That's figured in. That is figured in. Yeah. Okay. And it's going to go up again next year anyway. I also see that it may be a problem where you're pumping those up and then. The folks in the grade right above that. Right. Well, so that's why we, the study they did, uh, um, Adam made a adjustment last year to start bringing that up so it's not so close. And uh, yeah, we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, you got to chip away at it. It's a struggle. Uh, 5110. Yeah, so just to keep everybody up to date, we're on um, page 122 in the paper and ready for this. 131 in the PDF if you're following along. I did all the math while, while we were talking. <laughs> you're the best. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bob. Go ahead. 50, uh, 5110. 5110 on employee support and I'm going to the ground. Uh, basically, it boosts the uh, building ground department. Continuing uh, hoisting license education, safety jackets and uh, shirts, training, miscellaneous, um, and license certifications uh, that they did cut. And try to do the best we can on that this coming year. Any questions if you want to? Realize that there's a lot of safety stuff in there, so that you, know, you just gotta watch, watch what you're cutting there. I have one, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Uh, the cell phone. Uh, does the town have a cell phone policy on that? Number one and number two. Um, isn't there a way to, to decrease cell phone usage across the town for all the same program, same plan, <clears throat> versus splitting them out? They are all together on the same plan. Yeah. Okay. And the question about policy. Uh, Holly's. Yeah, I could just clarify the cell phone. 
Uh, we do have the police department has their own separate plan because of their needs. And they had set us up with a plan for the town to be on quite a while ago. So all the rest that aren't police are on one plan. Excellent. Other questions? 51, then. Okay, let's move on. 5200. Just leave, uh, list each building and, and, uh, and what the uh, breakdown of um, what we what we do at each one the cemetery. Uh, so we got that software subscription kind of be uh, taking effect soon. Um, uh, air compressor uh, inspection each year. Uh, we did take out the porta potties um, lettering in uh, the correction signs. But then you get like the, all the buildings, you got the monitoring the alarms and repair the, the solid waste is your recyclable and waste uh, rubbish containers. Um, Garage door repairs, um, fire extinguisher uh, inspections each year in the place, and sprinkle allowance, um, backflow, preventive valves for the water department fee. So these are in the equipment maintenance and the miscellaneous repairs. That's well needed and kind of underestimated because the Right. Two garage doors or right. come over. I mean, everything's just so expensive. It's so a little bit of a gambling right there. You know, that's that's like an estimate. Your your lump sum is just over five thousand. So you know, we're looking at about a little over a grand in, in that that gambling area. So an, another potential place where you might have to come back and say, I think I have more repairs right. than expected. Yeah. <clears throat> but look, looking at that entire list, I see subscription services. I see like must do's in there. So, the, you know, the takeaway from from this account is, um, is, is it, it's a finger crossing. You know, hope, you know, hope as a plan. <laughs> hope as a plan. <laughs> Any questions? Any further questions? No clarification. Fifty two hundred. We just the uh, waste. Going up fifteen percent, so fifteen percent. Who, pro who right. provide? That's a service. Yeah. Who uh, provides that? Uh, right now we get uh, Harvey, which what Republican. Um, I already have it flagged in my system. Every I can without getting any approval from Select Board okay. of Adam, I can go out and rebid that whenever I want. So I got a flag to rebid it. Mm -hmm. Contracts so. up. Okay, moving on to 5400. 5400 um, supplies. Uh, supplies, gentle supplies for other buildings, Christmas lights, volunteer lunches, uh, postal services, flags for the cemetery, and then the heat. Fuel oil or uh, propane. Like I said, that's this is going to be a a tough one to follow. I'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, I got a question for Adam. When these are filled, when these uh, account sheets are filled out, um, is there any rhyme or reason? This is a structural question. It's not. I'm, you know, no one's throwing any rocks. Are they, are they just filled out? By like amount, or is it just as it comes into the mine? Well, you if you're talking about the bottom line number, no, no, no. Like so, it's got supplies, then janitorial supplies, then Christmas lights. I know Christmas lights don't have more priority than you know heating. Oh, they would, that's a question more for Bob if you're asking about placement of yeah. Well, I mean, like budget guidance. Do you say like it, uh, to the department heads, could you prioritize with each of the accounts? Well, I, Do you I think that would be helpful. Uh or, well, I mean, too, or too much of a too difficult to do. The reason why I say that is, you know, we're sitting here knowing there's going to be a bunch of lump, you know, hard decisions after this meeting that the department heads need to take. We're looking through there to try, like Kim was saying, like identify risk opportunities, 
And if we look through this to say, what is the most important things on there? Um, so maybe, I don't know, if that's something that we can play with over the next year, if we were sitting here next year and say, and, and you know, from a budget guidance perspective, if it was prioritized, then right. we would right. we would see that. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, that would be something I want to send out my guidance to mm -hmm. the department yeah. heads. Yeah, it's just something that uh, it kind of jumps out to me. Yeah, as I mean, if I took out Christmas lights, I'm sure somebody in Templeton would donate them. I mean, I'm uh... not. Mr. Chair. So Justice and I met with Michael Gary over at the Chamber of Commerce. He took over temporarily for, um, what was it, Carol? Carol? Uh, I don't know who their previous I forgot was. The previous one, but um, because I had a question on square, square two, thinking about how to rally the businesses in town. And that square two is uh, the businesses of Gardner and they're a nonprofit. And so they sold um, memorial Christmas lights. That's how they, they do their Christmas lights. I haven't met with uh, Patty Bergs from She Owns Velvet Goose, but she's the head of that. But they do a lot of fundraisers during the year. And um, Justice and I had some ideas about seeing who's a, a member of the Chamber of Commerce in town and trying to get the villages, each village to maybe join together as a nonprofit to decorate and do stuff yeah. to bolster you know community spirit I, you know as we go through terry and it's a good point I, i'm not giving you work to do but you, as we go through you might actually pick off the ones where you can uh, approach community mm -hmm. community members to be able to say i can take that burden and we were talking about i forget i'm already forgetting some of the things we said this morning there was another thing we talked about this morning where it was an opportunity within the community to actually memorial tree right right like an order day, uh, day or something like that but if we can somehow bookmark some of the things that we can talk to community members so you know i bob you know i don't think christmas lights is a burden to what to bob but it is nice to be able to kind of sit and go through and say we can we can um work with other community members to find those things if I recall correctly, on the itemization of this, really the, the number that we're bringing to town is going to be the fifty or the forty nine thousand, right? So the itemization is just your attempt to break it out into something meaningful, right? In the itemization, but at the end of the day, it's yes. So. And I think that's a great time to basically say um, all of the detail that we talk about it never goes away. So you know what gets presented to town meeting is the, the culmination of all that work, but it never disappears, uh, the level of detail, because some people want that. And we've had some pretty heated discussions uh, within the community about that. All of this detail does not go away. The necessity to be able to, to put things into larger boxes to explain it on the floor of town meeting without going through Christmas lights of DPW, right. you know what I mean? But right. the detail never goes away. You can sit in town meeting, have that overall perspective right. and still have the budget book and understand where it's coming from. Go ahead, John. Yes, Mr. Chair. I, so the director would have, he has total responsibility of his budget. He manages budget <clears throat> to the best of his ability. And if he needs assistance, somebody comes back to the board of selectmen. Does he have ability within the 5,400 say, so to move money around, to use, you know, like, so if uh, heating oil for one building was more than the next building, could he use, that money to offset the difference. He has the ability to do that, right? Yeah. Okay. That's good budget. That's good budget. Thank you. I would just add, provided he does not exceed the numbers that we have here, because that would take an approval from the town meeting. The overall number. The overall number. Project. But yeah. But I'm talking Shuffling online. to meet the need, that is well within his wheelhouse. Excellent. Good job. Okay. Further discussion or questions for 5400? Moving on to the 5,600 and building and grounds, pretty much uh, utilities at all the town buildings, pretty straightforward. Uh, don't have much say in what, what we have to do is the water went up 11%, the sewer went up 3% electric. Uh, we are going to be getting billed for each location starting at Y23 um, from the light department. Oh, it's pretty straightforward. We're assuming all the electric. Is John, did you have a question? No, I didn't know we were, you, you were assuming all the electric was at this point. So, pilot, yeah, this is the year. That big kind of pilot. Well, we had the pilot for what was it, four or five years, Bob? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then this yeah. was the year that we 
over all the buildings um, projected of fifty or over forty thousand people. Okay. This one I kind of do a lump sum disallow because it's pretty this much detailed. Thank you. Yeah, and the description of that is page 120. You're in your paper copy, 129 in your paper copy, and 138 if you're following along on the PDF for more on that. 5,700 buildings and grounds. Uh, this is all stuff that I went through, put through capital. Um, it's a small dump truck for the buildings and grounds department. Backpack for all our weed or stay in there. That's constant uh, rotating of the equipment. And you got the cupola and uh, town hall parking lot phase one, which again, disintegrating. Uh, this was all on last year's capital as well. The second floor kitchen of the Baltimore fire station parking lot repairs. Construction of emergency management building, DQW Park a lot. Um, plans at Gilman Weight. The kitchen um, and a roof replacement at the same time. Funding for the uh, roof replacement. Where, where are we? Well, that, that will be uh, Article 4. The the, dip, the senior center roof coming out of the capex stabilization. Okay. Um, so you'll see that when we get to the capital. Okay. And the mitigation plan until that time. Bob already addressed it. He, we, the, the repairs he's his crews and, and the staff over there have done uh, right should now, get us uh, to get. Not sure. Right. I think we. I think it was eight hundred dollars. I had to hire a private contractor or operator. Um, I think 15, 18. Yep. And then um, contract wise, huh, uh, assuming town uh, votes, votes for that. We're getting all the bid documents ready to go. So similar to like, we will have to bid for the library roof. All great answers. Thank you. <laughs> no question. Uh, uh, John, then no. Uh, my, my, the group, well, you put that on the uh, capital plan that I was assuming, right? Yeah. <clears throat> Up here. Yeah. Because that obviously needs to be that's in real estate repair. Right. Um, do we have a plan to get that repeated in 2023, or is that like something we're pushing out? There? No, it's, uh, it's ongoing. Uh, we're in the middle of working with the CPC funding, I'm trying to work with us on making that happen. Awesome. Thank you. The uh, roof repair, $140,000 figure. How did you arrive at that figure? Well, we got to estimate uh, the architect that we use. Um, he works with a, a roofing company that gave us a quote. Well, like the 160 bucks. We put in for 140, and the, currently there's money at the senior center that can be used towards that repair. I believe it was 20,000. We have uh, roughly $40,000 of special articles for improvements to senior center. I believe there are projects for siding, but it just says improvements to senior center. So that would qualify for the roof. Okay, excellent. So the hundred forty thousand dollars project still has to go up there. Yes, I guess my question about this is looking at the numbers. Is that that number is dollars uh, per square foot plus the contingency of another seven hundred dollars a square foot, which means that the we we're looking at we have two hundred thousand. Well, what we're asking for the town for, um, for that part. I, I guess my question is, it seems to me that even a very conservative figure for, it's a membrane roof, get a rubber roof. It seems to me that um, it should be in the area of $15 a square foot. Well, it all depends on the builder. The builder that gave us a number of plans on uh, going in on the bid price. Because he's a, also a supplier, so he's buying stuff in volume. It's like last year, I got a pretty much a decent price. I'm doing it last year as well, because the supply is over 
stock on storage um, so he was able to give us a good price but we didn't get the you know, town didn't vote on it last year so it depends how much and who if you were just a regular you don't have stock or supplies yes it's good. the price is going to be higher but if you're sitting on material um they can do better yeah, I, I just just in, in looking at that, it seemed to me that the maximum should be you know, far less than the uh, twenty eight dollars a square foot. Just I could be totally wrong on that. Right, I mean, that's why we had the architect um, put the project together and working on other projects as well over there. Uh, but he he's getting these prices around. Of course, he's closer to the city, so the contingencies. Um, there'll, there'll be monies for that as well. Um, but we've been using them for a while now, we've been following his um, direction. Mike, I, go ahead. I was just going to say on page 209 in your budget book and 210, um, we, we're going for a hundred or forty thousand because uh, we have sixty thousand. I misspoke earlier, I said forty sixty thousand dollars of previous approved articles for the roof. So if you look on page 210 from the architect, he said uh, his gut feeling is leaning towards $200,000. So based, the architect went over there, did a full review, drafting up the specifications. Uh, he was right on last time we did a roof. Um, these projects are generally popular. So we get multiple bidders on them. Um, so they're relatively competitive. Uh, the problem we have is prevailing wage, all the other mass laws we have to follow is why you see such a substantial cost associated with municipalities going to bid for roofs. No, that, that's exactly right. A, a contract union wage is, uh, is what has to pay these so a, a standard floor that would, you know, cost, you know, 2000 costs of the town, you know, you know, 10 to 15 to 20,000, depending on the square footage. That, uh, people need to also understand that the senior center is, uh, it's four buildings that were put together. Yeah, that, were, modular. that modular that we got from the US Army. From Fort Devens, uh, and they put them together. So I mean, the whole roof structure was kind of—I don't really know what the word would be. It's not, yeah, it's it wasn't well, it well. It wasn't well done. Yeah, <laughs> no, there was six units, and everybody thought their units had new rubber roofing. No, that's the original rubber roofing with new seams. Right. And I mean, uh, if I was here, I probably would have pushed for a truss roof yes. with more pitch and then you had attic storage and you could put your HVAC and stuff up there. And, but unfortunately it is what it is and what we got, so. No. So, so I guess I wasn't fully aware of that, that even you have a private bidder, but they still have to bid to prevail. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Unless you're an owner operator working solely by yourself, then the prevailing wages. Sorry. Not like back in the day when uh, Mr. Bennett, Mr. Spring, and Mr. Smart got up on this roof and did some repairs. They volunteered. They volunteered. Find out, find out if they're available. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, further question. We're a little bit behind. 5,700. We got still yeah. snow. And I, uh, go ahead. Straight. Um, I messaged Holly about printing our budget versus actuals for Q1 and Q2. Um, she asked me if I would ask you if anybody else wants a copy of the budget versus actuals thus far. I do not. I have it electronically. Anybody? I don't have it. Just me. No, it's no nice budget. This is just an update on the last page of that. So snow and ice budget fifty one hundred. So what were you briefing off of the, the handout you just gave us, or to, that's the last page of? Okay, got it. So we are on one thirty one. 
131 or um, 140 if you're in the PDF. Go ahead. On a 5100, um, <clears throat> this is a workforce over time and uh, temporary power driver. Any questions? Good to know. Go ahead, John. I just want to ask, it was my first time through this. Looking at the last five fiscal years, it seems like you spent on the average at least $200,000 a year. And I guess my question is, why isn't the budgeted amount, why haven't it been set at $200,000 a year? Well, it, it was, I believe, closer to the beginning, but it, last couple, couple of years ago, we we borrowed, I believe, it, we cut five thousand to put towards the insurance, and now we're back increasing that budget back up. Like this year, last year I paid sixty-seven dollars a ton of salt. This year I'm paying seventy-four. They went up eleven dollars. So again. Inflation, I don't know what we're going to pay next year. That's at state bid price. So he goes after like a, a minimum number and we cannot spend, we can't spend under. Is it under? Right. Yeah. He so can't go below. Um, so he goes with that number knowing full well it's going to be higher. And that's going to be a consistent based on, you know, the North Worcester Hills reality. That's going to be uh, a consistent go back. To, to for town meeting to say everyone you know everyone saw how much it snowed or you know the, the fluctuation in the weather so that's that's really the groundhog day uh event that we go through with snow and ice so if the number is set at two hundred thousand, you can't go below that number <laughs> one forty seven no. five well, yeah so but we gotta remember once that that budget now we go into the deficit that's the only topic we go into deficit spending I believe that's Mr. Chair. That's the only account that can go in deficit spending, correct? We're one or two. I think it's. I think it's just that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in which we usually backfill at the special town meeting to expend it. So that's right. typically why. This year, I believe it's going to be. Uh, we're at the cover, close the deficit at the annual town meeting, and then we're going to need a transfer too, because it's been snowing on weekends, holidays. Most well, so everything's been going up. Like forty something times, uh, gone through the salt and using salt. We only plowed five times. Yeah, snow, snow and ice in uh, a town like Champaign is a, is an art. From his perspective, he has to be able to. He knows he's going to have to go back to get the money, but he also has to manage his force to say, "Should I?" Let me send you know he doesn't have an unlimited amount of people he can send out and treat the road. So if you're driving around and saying, Yikes, why hasn't this been treated yet? That's part of the process that Bob needs to go, you know, mentally go through to say, when when can I do it? When when's an opportune time uh to get out there and either scrape or spread? That's like this last one. I was the stack that I was just gonna treat and follow the main roads and go home and five inches later. Yeah, it's gonna happen. And he's also down one guy due to a retirement for a time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we're on 5,200. Yeah. The machine fabrication of metals and contract plow operators. Uh, fabrication of metals is if I have to have a plow uh, rebuilt or plated or a um, or if I lower him or something like that, or buy metal to make it up here. Fifty four hundred. Fifty four hundred. Um, this is the materials, plates, repairs to the flower stand, the hydraulics. We we make all our own hydraulic hoses. Uh, that's buying hoses and fittings. On the tree to salt, and of course the the plow blades, which have been going up astronomically right now. You pay for your plow blades. Your plow blades. You pay for those. Yes. 
Charts, huh? Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, $1,800 a blade. Hmm. Right. Why is that lump sum discount so high? It, it more, it's kind of the, the way that Noel was talking about to say if the true cost is so high, why are we budgeting so low? Mm -hmm. If it's it's snow and ice is the, you know the the lurking devil. It's mm. it's a very expensive. Again, um, between Adam and uh, between Adam and uh, Bob, they've got to be able to to buy it for something. So mm. yeah, it's it's a lot better in Florida. And are these interchangeable, like the heat and the electric? Are they interchange? So if he needs more hair, can he take it? From he he, no, no. he makes the he, yeah he has to not on the that. snow and ice. I can I can he can definitely I can that. transfer from labor or services within that budget, but I can't transfer from other budgets. Okay. That's why hence the deficit spend right. Okay. Um, I think we are to your, your page. Yep. That's the number. Make this twelve thousand two twelve. That's the number that we made a correction to. Which was fiscal year nineteen again. Yeah. So the magic number here is one forty seven five. Any more questions for Bob? To check the YouTube, we got no questions on YouTube. Any further questions, Snow and Ice, or for Bob? Bob, thank you very much for spending your Saturday morning with us. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Bob. Oh, I wanted to wake up. <laughs> I know you love us. It's okay. No, you'll be working later on tonight. Thank you, everybody. We will take a short recess after uh, after police. Um, but if people need to get up and use the facilities or anything, just do it. Huh? You all dressed up and everything. Absolutely. Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> Just stay here and suck it up. <laughs> Morning, Chief. Morning. Morning. Okay. Um, police in your budget book starts on page 74. If you're following along in the electronic, it is 83. Okay. We all ready? We're ready. Okay. So starting off with the police budget, you have 5,100, 5,100 personnel, which is basically all salaries related CBA expenses. Do you have any questions? All, all things personnel. So every, every need that you have, training, court, everything is, is on the sheet. Uh, yes. Yeah. I know you get asked all the time, you know, like, why don't, why don't we see more um, police officers out on the street? And I'd really like to make the point that there are so many different things that you have to do. You've got someone uh, in court. You've got, I mean, I know that you, you know, um, you go through this a lot, but it, it's a lot of different demands. And I think it really, if, if someone's at home looking at the sheet, it should be apparent what all the different th those demands are. So, Mr. Kerry, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, back in, in on the last page when we go over about the uh, additional officer, back in 2014, Templeton had just gotten to 10 officers. Okay? Back in 2014, the proper staffing for Templeton should have been 12. Back then, it was 1.5 officers per 1,000 residents, okay? We haven't reached back to 10 since 2014. Now, the average standard for minimum staffing, and you can Google it, this isn't just coming from me, is 3.5 officers per 1,000. 14 officers. We are almost hitting 9,000 residents. Mm -hmm. We are greatly understaffed. I have numerous complaints about speeding cars. 
they're not my priority. I can't have, I don't have enough staff to have one guy out just enforcing traffic. Right. It just can't happen. When do I have maybe an extra guy that's not busy doing something on the midnight shift? But who's driving on the midnight shift? Not too many cars, but when that 911 call comes in, you better believe they want an officer there. Um, so staffing wise, when will your part timers pretty much go away? Are you planning on? We we brought that up before. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. Um, with police reform and post, uh, the state of Massachusetts in their infamous wisdom decided that they were going to basically phase out all part-time officers. So by January 1st of 2027, all part-time officers will no longer exist. They'll, you'll have a unicorn here or there, meaning you'll have a full-time officer that works in like, say, Hubberston that doesn't have, well, you can't even use Hubberston because then they aren't allowed to. But let's say um, Athol that doesn't have a lot of overtime and they want to jump to us to get some overtime. That's all you're going to have. There are no more part-time officers. It's not even offered anymore. Um, so what they're doing is they're phasing them out. Uh, like I said, 2027, they're all done. Um, and right now they're in a phase of taking all the part-time officers that are still there that want to stay on. It's called the Bridge Academy, where they have to do 200 hours uh, in a one-year period to get their certification. Now, once they do the Bridge Academy, they have to get 2,400 hours in a five-year period. Now, that can be any five-year consecutive period. So it could be 1995 to 2000. As long as they work 2,400 hours in that time frame, they can petition post and become certified Massachusetts police. I don't want to even say police officers anymore because we're not police officers anymore. We're peace officers. Um, and then they'll be certified. Now that opens up another problem because everything going on with what we just went through from 2020 to today with the negative outlook on policing, there's very few applicants out there. Templeton's lucky we're not going through that. Hubberston is down two officers and have been down two officers for over a year. Um, we have a pretty good reputation and we don't seem to have that problem. Um, but it's, it's going to come to that day. We're going to lose two of our part-timers this round. Um, and then we'll have, I believe it's just one, the second round. And then on the third round, we'll have three that will be up for the bridge. And if they don't complete the bridge, they'll be gone. Mr. Chair. Um, on the budget form for part-time patrol shifts, it looks like you have it budgeted at 19.5 for 32 hours a week. Yes. Or 52 weeks. Does that mean that you're staffing for 32 hours a week in total for all um, part-timers? Or is that, is there supposed to be multiple part-timers that are over 32? Or so that's 32? that's 32 hours a week I'm allowing for part-time shifts. Okay, so it could be over multiple head count. Yes, you know, the hour shift here or there, yeah. but 32 hours in total every week. We're actually running more part timers than that 32 hours right now. Okay. Um, it is a problem. That sounds like a big problem. Uh, it is a problem. Like we're going to be over budget. <laughs> but that's that. Well, no, 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 because no. that's why I'm here to budget to manage my budget. Right. So I've been doing it since 2014. It hasn't been a problem, and I'm going to con continue doing it. Um, the only way I can fill 24 hour day coverage is running multiple shifts and I, I make the money work. I mean, it's obvious. I've been doing it for over seven years. There's never been an issue. So, Mr. Chair, is the initial officer already on this first page? No, he's, he's not. Right. Okay. He's not. We'll come to that on the last page. Excellent. Right. That's my next question. Who pays for the bridge program? That's what I was. So, so the bridge problem, uh, bridge program is has to be funded by local or the city. Um, the state, however, is covering pretty much all of the training classes. Yeah. So we're only going to have to pay the officer to attend the classes. However, um, 
Mr. Rafulo, who is the uh, head of MPTC right now, which is Mass Training Council, has indicated that that money could dry up within the next year. Mr. Chair, uh, has there ever been has there ever been raised to maybe staff one of the sergeants at salary rather than hourly rate? There have been brought up thought about. I know it's using the hourly rate you pay for overtime, but if you bring them into a salary salary compensation with the overtime, you know, just things say I think you have a budget for seventy two thousand. I'm not sure what they they would make in overtime pay, but you know, is that ever been thought of, or is that just not really a standard in the departments? Uh, it's that's not really a standard when it comes to sergeants. Um, basically, sergeants and patrolmen's all stay within the CBA. Okay. Um, the only time you see uh, officers coming out of the CBA is when they the rank structure goes up to where you get to a smaller department that has like if we created a lieutenant's position, mm -hmm. that position would probably come out of the union and become a contractual salaried employee. Okay. Um, over in Gardner, all of their officers up to lieutenant are in the CBA. The deputy chief and the chief are the only ones that are outside of it. Okay. For an example. Okay. Mr. Chair, and all your, this is a uh, union contract. Yes, as well, correct? Yes. All right. Yeah. Any other Two, questions under 51? 5100. 110. 110. 110. 90% uh, of the issue articles here are also covered by the CBA, um, except for the cell phones at the bottom. Um, so I will take any questions on the 5110, which is employee support. Hearing none. Hearing none. 5200 5200 is the expense budget purchase of services uh, most of these items are all dedicated slots that are mandated by requirements of the department the only two that fluctuate you'll see at the bottom which is equipment maintenance and technology support all the rest are pretty much fixed expenses that the department has to pay do you have any questions those last just looking at your lump sum just allows like yeah. the, the two last items will share the burden of that lump sum. That is correct. I will figure out some way right. to cover the question. Yes, go ahead. No, the animal control positions. Um, yes. How does that compare with other towns? And how is that? Uh, you still have a dedicated person. So we we are. Um, lack of a better word we share with Winchenden so uh, we contract their services um, they have an animal control we pay them to come out is right now there's about four this is probably the best our animal control services has been running since we had um, Carol I don't know if anyone remembers I Carol I do um, Carol was great um, after that, we went into some difficulties. We jumped into bed uh, at one point in time with Gardner, which did not go well. Um, they actually held our truck hostage for a yeah. little while. Um, but we got it back and we're waiting on a new one, which should come this year. Uh, but it's it's going very well. Um, got a response time. I've had to, you know, yeah. I've got animals. So they're, and... they're actually not our employees. They answered to me, but they are employees of Winchinen. Um, they answer to me when they're in town, and I don't have any issue with them. Right, so you're comfortable with that amount of money? Yes, that's a contracted amount. That's what we pay. Um, Adam had negotiated that with Lynch. Thank you. Yes. So we have a contract and an MOI? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Can I speak a comment on that? Absolutely. Yes. We received a call this week, uh, a message that a lady had a cat whining all night keeping her awake i emailed eric baker and animal control and they got back to me within the hour and she was out there taking care of it and brought the cat to uh he's a haven yeah just to reiterate how well that's working yeah. and um that thirty thousand, 
there's a little cushion in there only because um, what Holly had just brought up, after hours, there's an emergency fee. Right. So you have to, we take uh, on an average how many emergency fees we pay. There's also a figure in there that they also do our barn inspections. So it's not just animal control, they also do the barn inspections. So that's not the actual price that we pay for the ACO, but it's barn inspection, emergency call outs, plus, plus the ACO. To buy inspections, to the and then we pay the inspector to do the inspection. To, but are the other residents charged an inspection fee? No. I, for a buy inspection? No, no, no. I can speak from experience. No. Okay. No. It's just curious. Yeah. Are there any other questions on 5200? 5400s, uh, rather small. It's just supplies. Um, this figure pretty much has not gone up that much since I took over in 2014, except for ammunition, which is through the roof right now and hard to get. Um, we are taking steps to help stabilize that number. Um, last year is one of my capital expenses. We were able to buy, uh, a lack of a better word, a simunition training um, component, which now and under police reform, we have to train twice a year now in firearms. However, only once has to be live fired. The other can be virtual, can be simunitions. So what we are going to do is we're going to start doing simunitions. We've, we've done it before at the high school. Um, so this year we're going to have a training where we'll go up to the high school, do active shooter training up at the high school. Our simunitions aren't, um, they're not ours. So... Simulation training, you would take your gun, you would take it apart, you take the bolt out, you take the barrel, replace the barrel, and then you use paintballs right. um, that had a small charge in it. Ours now are a CO2 actual gun um, with, with uh, like paint pellets, almost like an airsoft. Um, so it's going to hurt. Yeah. You're going to know you got hit. Um, we're going to go up and we're going to train. First, we're going to train in the schools. We'll train at the high school to get everybody done because we haven't done that training in a long time. Uh, the next year we'll go to the middle school. Um, I look, I'm going to look to having other departments come in. Um, they'll pay a fee, um, $25 a person, whatever it is, because whenever you have something of that nature, there we only have two guys on most of the time, maybe three if I'm on duty, you know, during the day shift, um, they're going to come back us up. Mm -hmm. So they need to know our layout also. Mm -hmm. Any other questions in 5400? Okay. Now this is where we get to 5700, which is other. You will see that um, we have requested to restore to 10 uh, police officers hiring a new and the replace of the cruiser, which um, the officer uh, was proposed under opera. I had submitted a four year proposal under opera funds and the cruiser was moved to capital which I believe we are going to use meal tax funds to purchase the cruiser. Plus we have a $5,000 green credit because we're going to get a, a hybrid this time around. Do you have any questions in the 5,700? I just have one, Mr. Chair. So obviously you have a sustainment plan to a 10th officer come once, once the upper funds are used at one time, then there's a sustainment plan for that for the next you know, two to five years. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I can, uh, um, Chief and I worked on a plan. Um, it's been reviewed by town council as well, um, and it, it's going to meet the standards. It's going to be a part of my recommended spending plan with our ARPA that I will send to the board from April, um, to the advisory as well. Um, like the chief mentioned, he's been down since 2014. Um, this is an opportunity. Um, and if I'm going to add any staff, it would just be that one staffer so we could sustain that cost in the out years. No, I, Mr. I totally agree. I mean, I, I would be wanting an extra bed piece of uh, piece of officer uh, for some time now. Yes. Uh, I'm just glad that it's it's here finally. Thank, thank you. Um, my concern is, is how we get, how we choose to be to sustain that because now is budget of one mil three now is going to go to one mil four and a half next year. So potentially, obviously potentially higher based on the, the salaries and union contracts. So I want to make sure that we're able to sustain it. That's all. Yeah. I, I like to say the overall fiscal health 
of the town that is you know the, uh, that additional police officer or restoring uh staffing to the police officer that's one of the, the central pillars that we all look at as if we are financially healthy those that it becomes one of the primary if not the primary opportunity right. to get the chief's public safety team to where it needs to be and actually it, that's fine. in my i'm not i don't want to speak for any other board members but i certainly that, that i weigh these things to say where are we financially, you know, the financial health and then the opportunity to, to make that happen. And I and I really like the strategy that we're we're getting to, but you're right, it has to be sustainable. And you know, Mr. Chap, I make it clear, he's not where he needs to be. Right. He show up by at least four more officers to make him just to standard out. Understood. Uh, so you've got about a team of 14 versus 10. So correct. Um am I am I on target with that, Chief? You're close. Man, <laughs> I can make it work with I know you can. I can make it work with 12. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> Mr. Chair, I have uh, Go ahead. three questions. Um, yes. My first question is uh, the new standard number. When will that be a mandated number where you have to go to 14? So it's not, that's not, it's not a mandated. That is, if you Googled, if you did, what is the recommended officers per 1,000 residents? Back in 2014, it was 1.5. So we should have been at 12 officers back in 2014. If you Google it now, today, and it will pull it up, the recommendation for officers per thousand is anywhere from 3.25 to 3.5 officers per thousand. You have to understand that in today's policing, which, which is moving fast, it's changing always, everything has, they want you to slow down. They want you to de-escalate. Not, not, I'm not saying it's wrong, I think we've always done that though, but now it's really emphasized that it's it's de-escalation, it's dealing with mental health, it's it's taking the matter and sitting back and letting it evolve. Well, if I only have two guys out on the street and these two guys are dealing with individuals that they have to de-escalate, now a situation that you maybe would take under in 45 minutes, now you're looking at an hour and a half or two hours. And all the court proceedings that are going on with what we do now, when we make an OUI arrest, you have one officer guaranteed off the street for four to six hours. Guaranteed, he's off the road. Because he has to do all this paperwork that we're mandated to by law now. And then when he brings him in, both officers are gonna be off the road as long as it takes to book him and to get him into the cell. So, so. It seems like suggested numbers eventually become mandated. It, they they will. I can't tell you when that's going to happen. Okay, um, that's my question. But it's 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 coming out. Uh, some of the towns had said, uh, you know, you always hear, well, we'll just have the state police come in. You're not just going to have the state police come in. I hate to say it. There's only three on duty from the French King Bridge to Lemister. They're in all the cities in town in between. Yeah. So they're not going to be able to answer our calls. Not even if they wanted to. No. Not even if they, no. It takes one accident and you'll see three stages there because they might need them. You know, yeah. it, you got a pile of directing traffic, looking at somebody, writing to this, that. Yeah, we'll call the state police. <laughs> yeah, we'll see no. tomorrow. It's, it's more like the other way around. They're calling us to back them up on Route 2 because we don't go out on some cities and towns do. We generally do not go out on Route 2. It's just a mutual agreement. We stay off Route 2, but they call us all the time. And Chief Dickey, who's going to be doing the fire after, he has to go out there all the time for their accidents. So they'll call us when they're short-handed. So. My, my other yes. question is uh, concerning the cruiser based on a five-year life. Uh, well, should it really be a four-year life? I didn't base it on a five-year. I would recommend a four-year. Um, uh, Mr. Bennett has, we've we've spoke many times. He's He's been in this as long as I have. The town has finally got on the same page that cruisers should be rotated out on a yearly purpose, on a yearly um, process. Uh, it took us a long time to get to that, to have that understanding. Um, yes, I would like it to be four years because um, right now we have a cruiser that uh, was it? it's, it's not 15, 17. I cannot get that thing back on the road. Just one thing goes wrong with it and another one comes up and that's only a 2017. 
Well, I would think that your majority of your repair costs would be in the fourth and fifth year. So yeah, exactly. So if you end the life at four years, you're saving money in the long run. You would save money in the long run. Um, and if you're doing a four year and our cruiser that's supposed to be coming this year, which I don't even know if we'll get it within this fiscal year, um, is a Ford F-150. Now, let's say we did do the, the four year rotation plan and that F-150 is in decent shape. Well, that vehicle could have gone to another department if it had to. But if you're pushing it at five years, now that vehicle, it's only good for trading because there's yeah. nothing, no real value to it. Yeah, I just think of a four year, there's multiple benefits. You're absolutely correct. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions, 57? Uh, just to follow up on that, um, replacing the cruiser each and every year, uh, from a maintenance standpoint alone, you would save money. Nowadays, you probably, you probably don't even change the oil unless you have an accident or you, you blow the tire out on our smooth roads uh, or something along those lines. And to fund it, we've already put that in place. It was presented to the business community and the residents that the meals tax money would go. And at that time, it was a lease for a cruiser and make the three-year lease payment for a pickup truck for the DPW. Uh, if you follow the meals tax revenue, uh, it's going beyond what was estimated. It's just a matter of having the political financial will to dedicate that funding to cover the cost, the yearly cost, which is about 60 grand. Give or take. Uh, how to tell the future, but for a replacement of the police cruiser. And I think if you do the long term costing out of the maintenance of keeping a cruiser or any vehicle until it's like junk. It's, it's foolish. Mm -hmm. you're, you're better off to, to cycle through. And to my knowledge, he's Mike's the first one or the one that I'm best aware of that has the plan to not only buy new cruisers, but he wants to get rid of this one and get a new one. As a replacement plan cycle, we have the funding in my, my view that was put in place, uh, and we just segregate it to cover the cost of that cruiser. Because if you go back and look in the records, that's what it, the meals tax was sold on was lease the cruiser and pay the lease of the thing. And I don't want to do leases because again, my personal view is that's just adding to debt because you have to find that money in the future. If you take, if you can take the uh, meals tax and all indications are that will uh, stay at the level where it's at, you can buy, pay for the cruise at house right each and every year. And it, it's a good plan. And along with, if we can keep excess levity capacity, if, again, if we can keep the financial discipline and the political will uh, in a couple of years, we can build in the capacity and the budget, the budget for uh, full-time officers, additional, to get back to where we were uh, without using one-time money. Now, one-time money maybe gets you there quicker, and this is just my personal view, but the excess levy capacity, will put that money in place to cover the cost of that, and then we'll work on finding ways to pay for the next thing down the line. But you can start a list and, and talk. Uh, there's a plan in place, and, uh, and I fully support it, and I hope we follow through with it. If I could just offer payback off of Jeff for a second. Because we got to this plan, I've actually taken one cruiser out of our fleet. So we're actually down a cruiser from when I took over, but it's because we went to this plan and I didn't have to keep another spare when it would always break down. It's actually, it's gone now. So we've actually reduced the car from our full fleet. So it's a double financial win. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> to, to piggyback on both of you, um, our public safety fleet, our DPW fleet, it's not like the family car sitting at home. You got to think of this more like it's an airplane. Sitting on the ground, it does nothing. It's working for you when it's in operation and moving. 
to that point with our public safety fleets, especially, it's not so much miles driven every year, it's how long that vehicle is sitting at idle, which is where the wear and tear and the additional maintenance fees, and we've already addressed with DPW, the additional fuel fees come into place. The newer vehicles are more fuel efficient. We're looking at the newest one with the Green Communities Assistance and Grant because we're looking at the hybrid models. It is a move in the right direction, and I'm, I'm one of the proponents every year. I used to sit there going, darn it, another police car? you got to be kidding me. But if you look at it and cost it out, dollar cost average it, it really does make sense. Mr. I can... Tim, I mean, absolutely. Backing is going to be... You know, I'm sorry, because I'm sorry, when I, was, when I was on the slide, I mean, Tim would hit me all the time. Well, the cruiser, what's wrong with you people? <laughs> every single time, every single time. And I'm like, well, if you're in my seat, you'd understand why. If you're in his seat, you would really understand yep. why. And, and we were we went up with the five-year plan because of that reason. But I do agree with the four-year plan. But my other recommendation, obviously, if we could keep in the notes, would be, uh, you know, adding that to the, uh, the measurement policy as far as utilization of funds. You can do that. So utilization of... Uh, the tax revenue from the meals tax, you can actually make that into a policy specifically for a specific item each year. I don't know if the town's at that point yet, but that would be a great way to start, especially knowing the fact when that started, we had an estimated value of about 45000 Now I think it's breaking over 60 if correct me if I'm wrong. 50. 50. It's, it's, it's 57. All right. It's, it's up over 50. I know that. But we, but we budgeted, point of, point of clarification, Mr. Chair. We budgeted. Uh, in our revenues for 50, but Jeff, I think, is talking about what the actual pie will be um, with the with the meals. The actual tax. projection would be 70. I got you. Projected, that's so that's just that's yeah. just a food for thought. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Got it. See what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> 5,700. Any, any other questions? 5,700. All right, great. So the only, the last thing in the chief's packet was uh, his upper request. So as far as sustainability plan, um, Adam is going to work with the board on that. And you can see, you can see the structure that, um, that the chief outlined in his upper request. Chief, anything else? Party words? Uh, no, nice to see you all this morning. Absolutely. Thank you. I told you I'd be short and sweet. Mm -hmm. Great job. You got you all Can I just give a shout out? I don't know. It's probably not appropriate, but uh, back in the day, uh, off of when is it Sergeant Fliss was an officer? Yes. He he was already a peacekeeper. <laughs> I don't know how that training went back then, but he really um, impressed upon me uh, his um, demeanor under pressure. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. You yeah. today. I'm going to make a motion that we just take a, a five be, before we go into fire. We take a five minute break. Does that sound good? Chief, I don't know if that needs to time. be. Does that need to be a motion? You could do a motion to select. All right, motion for a five minute recess. So we'll, second. A motion and a second. And Chief, oh. Huh? Oh yeah, I mean we're 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 running about twenty minutes behind right now. I need to recuse myself. Okay. All right. Um. So we've got a motion out there for a five minute research. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Yes, Any opposed? Okay, we're in recess for five minutes. Come back at 1028.
Okay. Uh oh. Okay. Thank you. All right. We are back. Um, thank you. I think everyone needs a big quick break. It is now 1030. We're about 30 minutes behind. Um, and with us now, we've got Chief Dickey and the Fire Department. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, everybody. And that is page number 85. 85 in your book. And if you're following along in the PDF, it is page 94. All right, Chief, let's take it away. Um, any, any, you can uh, go right into your 5100 or you can uh, give an introduction if you will. I can, Mr. Chair, before the Chief starts. I do want to thank the Chief. He spent quite a bit of time. Uh, this is the first year. Uh, there was a budget to well from last fiscal year to separate the uh, ambulance um, expenses. So the Chief did spend quite a bit of time having the fire budget and now have an ambulance budget. So. The fire budget you'll see under this section and the ambulance will be in section seven so chief if you can't take it from here i just wanted to kind of highlight the work you did to make this a reality and it'll be a separate article this year for the ambulance thank you so, uh yeah like adam said we we separated it out it still is a work in progress hopefully we'll get a little better every year um adam and i did spend quite a bit of time doing that this year um the one thing that You'll notice, and we'll, with the first 5100 account for fire, is 99% of salary is still there um, because they're a dual role uh, function for people. Um, and when we get to the EMS side of it, the 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 salaries that are strictly EMS are over there on that side of it. So, Great. Thank you. Thanks for pointing that out. So in my 5100 uh, to get started, um, I actually, I didn't put in an APRA request for additional manpower. I just like the police chief, um, I'm in desperate need for more full-time help. Instead of putting in for the APRA funding, I, I built it into my budget in hopes to give uh, the boards um, the ability to take a look at it and to figure out funding on their way. Um, the APRA funds for me are one-time funds. That's my belief on them, even though we can spread them out for a few years. And salary is not a one-time fund type of thing. Uh, plus, APRA funds can't be used for um, like the uh, retirement and things like that. So um, I just built everything for that into my budget. Um, I can't say that we've ever been fully staffed for the fire department. We have been um, since the board, and I don't remember, uh, John, when you were it was with it, but when um, the past uh, chief became, you know, the board come in, they hired a paramedic fire chief to start building up them. So we've been building since that. We haven't got to a point where we're fully funded yet for the personnel. Um, we really could use uh, two to three more people easily to try to staff. Uh, I have a very difficult time staffing when I have vacation times um, and, and personal times having to, you know, approve it. I have a very hard time with backfilling that. The uh, per diem slash part-time people, they're very unreliable. They work when they want to work. They typically have three or four fire departments or ambulance services that they're working for, and they take what best suits them. So it's hard to fill those shifts with them. Um, our, our minimum manning is different than the police department where they have a, so many per thousand. The fire department has always been a so many people per truck. And, 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 and towns can't do that. I mean, if you tried to put three or four guys on every truck I have down at the fire stations, I'd have 30 guys on a shift and that's just not gonna happen. Um, but last year when I did the community comparison, I brought in paperwork that showed we're at the bottom of what everybody that we have as comparisons are. We're not in the middle, we're not at the top, we are dead last in what we have. Uh, we can't, during the day, if I have no one out sick and I have my full-time people there, I can fill the ambulance. One ambulance, one call. Something else comes in, I have to worry, I have to rely on call firefighters to come back and getting call firefighters 
to come back, especially during day shift, is very, very tough. It, we, we don't have the days of the paper mills in town and everything, and factories in town where they let their, their people come back and run on the fire department. Don't have that. I'm lucky to get one, maybe two people to come back um, and help us on calls during the daytime. Uh, so it, 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 I have the ability through ambulance receipts to help fund more, but I can't fund, you know, the three more that I need. We can probably, it, it, if we find a way to get more help, and then we cover more of the calls that some of the ambulance calls that were missing and we get the billing, more funds come in. Right. And we're not leaving that money sitting on the table. I understand. So it's, um, you know, with Adam's help, um, I was able to put somebody on, another full-time person this year. Um, I call it a uh, an impact shift. Basically what I did was I took hours allotted for part-time people to fill shifts, put enough of them together. Right. And Adam and Kelly were able to find money in the benefit package uh, budget to be able to put a new firefighter paramedic on. And that person will be starting Monday. It's a, uh, I call it an impact shift what they're doing. So they're gonna, they're gonna work a 24 hour shift on Mondays, which is the day the other guys that are on the rotating shift never work. That's a Kelly day it's called for them. And then on Friday, he's gonna do another 24 hours. And actually on that Friday, I will be two, paramed two firefighter paramedics for 24 hours. That will be the first shift that we'll have that I feel fully covered. So, um, and that person that was hired was hired knowing that if we as a town found a way to hire two more people that his shift would go back to rotating uh, just like the other guys do. And then I would rotate shifts and, and cover everything there. Um, but that in a nutshell is my 5,100. It, it, again, this is the fire and ambulance side of it, except for just my on-call EMTs. Chief, if I could just jump in for a second too, with that new shift, uh, what we did as well, because they're unionized now, we did a side letter for that shift. So it's been agreed upon with the union and okay. the town. Yeah, I just want to cover that, Chief. Does that uh, person get to sleep at all if there's no emergencies? Yes. Firefighters are different than police. You know, right. police run usually run an eight-hour shift, and they're out in the car or in the office. Firefighters, they have uh, we have chore lists that every you know they all do, and on top of their chore list, they all have different functions that they do. So never mind just um, taking care of the trucks and making sure the trucks are good and the, the stations clean and things like that. I get, you know, I got like one guy that does all my medical supplies, you know, purchasing and another guy that takes care of my IT stuff and uh, organization and things. They all have other jobs, but usually when the, by the time the chief goes home for the night, they're winding down and just getting the miscellaneous stuff. And yeah. after dinner, that's okay. their time. Thank you. Mr. Chair, please go ahead. How many full time guys do you have now? The new person will be uh, not including myself to be four. Me five. No, five. The, yeah, I'm sorry, with the new person will be five. You have copy on the on 5100, you have full time and on call, and we have like seven full time. Because that's what I'm asking for. If you if you look at my request uh, compared to the administrator's recommended, it's quite different. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Oh, I see. What you're doing. I see. Right. When we do level service, that that's like, you know, right away they're gonna they're gonna say this is exactly what I need to run this service. So it was try, it, It's like a growing pain, or it's like just a trying to paint the picture of what's required all by. And also following the, the budget guidance given by um, Adam. I got you. So 
I understand what they're doing. U ultimately, we just kind of added in that extra step, but it is level level funded. Yeah, because uh, if I can, Mr. Chair, yep, please. Uh, the goal of the selector was to, they wanted to grow the public safety staff, but to do it in a creative way. Yep. Um, the fire chief found a way to make it work within his appropriation this fiscal year, like he mentioned, and with the new staffer, uh, come full time staffer coming on, and then the police chief looked at the the use of the ARPA. So they're looking at creative ways because we, we understand public safety. You know, we're, we're trying to build them up, but. Uh, looks like we'll have that one new in, in the fire department, but then also if, if the ARPA gets approved by the select, but we'll have one more in the police end too. So we're not quite at the level where the department heads want, um, but we're we're slowly making progress. Okay. And Mr. Chair, you said this year, so there is a sustained plan for the next two to five years. I assume. Well, I, I can sustain my that person I just put on because that, that's actually built on the budget where on right now on right now and there's no increase for the next budget and i can i can maintain that through their con uh, their union contract thank you chief any other questions on 5100 so 5110 employee support um this is basically where um we do their equipment their, their protective gear um the uh the clothing allowance for the full-time people and i put some money in for uh clothing allowance for part-time people because we try to get them uniform the and their out and everything too um, go Chief did Tim forward you. Fall River has a mill a textile company now that's making a firefighter underwear without pieces in it. Mm -hmm. okay. Firefighter underwear? Just yeah, like don't you have something under awesome. your gear? Just regular clothes, street clothes. Oh, I'll look it up and send it to you. The chief, it was one of the fire rescue ones. It's along the lines of the uh, protective hoods. There's a new product line release. It was one of the knitting rolls out of Fall River was introduced. It. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. No. I love how you've characterized it. <laughs> well, that's why I, was I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? Well, that, that's why I was like, oh, no. I would have fooled the room. <laughs> Good plot and brief. Yeah. Uh, can, we, can we keep it pretty light? <laughs> yeah, I can see. All right. Uh, 50, oh, be, before. What does that Roger, say? I know. Take it offline. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we move on to the, your next, uh, well, if someone had questions uh, uh, again about 50, 5110, for the 5100 budgets, yours, the chief, and, and uh, like the big three. And I think it's important to spend a little bit of time. So I, I, I appreciated that you kind of talked that we talked that through, um, talked that through. Um, so I just wanted to be able to say that those are the, the, the tough ones. Just because it's such a, a large department. Any questions for 5110? Underwear or not? I just want to clarify. I just want to clarify. So this seven, six in here in addition to you. So if this budget passes the way it is, would you be able to hire an additional three? Only if it passes with my numbers. And that would give you the ability to fill shifts without counting on those per diem. Yes. I understand that. Does everyone else understand that? It, 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 it boils down to that lump sum disallowed. OK. 52. Oh, go, go ahead. I believe it's over that lump sum disallowed, right? Because the request is for 926, 927 pounds, yes. we'll call it. And the recommended is at 712. So that's making up a difference of roughly $210,000. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's not, not the lump sum disallowed. I'm sorry. The yeah, yeah, that's lump sum so disallowed of $78,000 is from his numbers. Of the 712. Right. I got you. Okay. 5110, uh, 5200. Uh, purchase of services. Um, so here, this is um, 
just like every other department when we have to purchase a service. So we have our fire reporting software in here. The fire reporting software is actually a split cost. You're gonna see the rest of that remaining cost on the EMS side because we use one software for dual purposes. Um, we're all, all the, uh, the work on our trucks and our testing, we have to, we're supposed to follow NFPA guidelines. So all our fire hose gets tested every year. All our fire pumps get tested every year. All our ground ladders get tested every year. And that's where all of this uh, comes from. Questions 5200. Uh, I have one. Mm -hmm. uh, the your services uh, is the town do you does your services or do you do contract out? No, we contract out for all of our services, even your vehicle. Yes, Roger. The um, especially for our fire equipment, mm -hmm. I bring in. I have a mobile company that does it. They come in, they do all the services right in the station. If they can't do it in the station, the repair or the service, they take it back to uh, Spencer where they're out, out from and repair it there. And they are all fire certified uh, mechanics there. And uh, Highway just doesn't, he, they would need to add a second mechanic if they want to even just take care of some of the basic stuff for us. I was just looking at your, your chief vehicle. That so goes to Matthew Ford, Understood. along with like the ambulances that are Ford and so forth. Excellent, thank you. Great, 5,400. Okay, so this is uh, supplies. Um, and so this, this is actually gonna be new uh, a lot this year here because usually EMS is included with that. So. Um, we really lumped everything together. So trying to figure, you know, some of these numbers are a guesstimate, really. I don't know how often some of the things are going to fail or that we have to replace. Um, things like the DEF fluid, you know, I'm budgeting one drum here and then EMS, you're going to see one. I share those things with Bob at Highway. We buy every other drum because we're using them together. Um, so... Any questions on supplies? Fifty six is governmental, right? Fifty seven hundred. Fifty seven. Fifty seven. Yeah, fifty seven hundred. So fifty seven hundred. Yeah. Um, so here we have the, you know the 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 lease for our. Our newest engine um, and our uh, capital expenditures on this one. Um, hopefully, with the help of the light department next year, they, we can buy the last of our SCBA units. Um, that purchase would then finish that program that happened over a three would be a three year period, and um, they'd be all replaced at that point. Uh, the third one down the pick up uh, the utility truck, the state is purchasing that for us for the APRA funds. And we got the uh, the grant paperwork last week and I'm working with uh, Department of Fire Services on that. And I actually uh, dealing with one of the four dealers um, on the Mass State bid list. And I think I actually found the truck in stock that I'll be able to get this fiscal year. Wow. And that is the additional funding Senator Gobi found for us. Yes. And yeah. Procured for us, which, yes. is, which was been a concept. It's a good word. Procured. Uh, procured. I was hoping to get a one ton truck. Uh, one ton trucks are not really available. And we don't really need the one ton. Uh, we can make do very easily with the three quarter ton. And that's what I was able to find. And now I'm working with the dealer to make sure that it's in budget. Is that, sure. is that multi use? So does that have a pile on it? Does it, does it do so things? what I'm trying to buy, if there's enough money in it, is would we would take the bed off the truck, put a utility body on the back of it, so we have cabinets. It will have an eight foot plow on it. Excellent. It will be fully 
lights and radios on it to carry your tanks. Right. Um, no, no, this will, it, the utility truck, it'll be when we help people. If we still go out and do solar pumping for people, so that equipment will be on it. Um, and for, uh, but right now, if we have a major fire, we use our personal pickup trucks to bring hose back from the fire to the station. Oh, okay. So it'll be used for things like that. Yeah. Um, people transporting. We uh, we have a training site up at the old Temple Developmental Center, one of the old buildings that we use for training. So we can use it to bring training props up and back and forth. We'll be able to use it for uh, right now. If I send somebody to the academy, they take their own car to the academy. We'll use it to have people to actually drive to the academy so they're not using their own vehicles excellent so forth yeah. plus we'll be able to use it for inspections right now we use a 1978 um pickup truck that is a forestry unit for to go out and do inspections for. so which would be the next thing uh the forestry unit that's part of the capital plan um and work working our way down lower that in this budget, there are some items that weren't high enough to make the capital plan that I'm looking to update. Um, nozzles for the fire, our, our hand lines, um, water manifolds, uh, and some Siamese valves, clapper valves. These are all things that um, the ones we have are 30 plus years old, trying to update for some new equipment. Uh, on here, the Scott SCBA pack tracker, that is, uh, those are tools that can help find uh, an SCBA, a down firefighter in the fire. Um, so, but we are actually, I'm getting one of those through a grant process this year, uh, fire safety grant. And um, that's actually been ordered along with uh, some other equipment. Nice. Any questions on 5700? Nope. Um, jumping to yes. section seven. Page 255, 264 in the PDF. So the ambulance overview page. Okay, is that prior? The yeah. chief's going to start with the so, right. the, so the chief will start with the fifty one hundred. Two fifty four with the overview page. So fifty one hundred for ambulance. Um, the salaries. There's three lines on it. Um, the director of EMS. That's his office hours um, and doing his work that needs to be done on a weekly basis. On-call salaries, the on-call EMTs get a $20 stipend for six hours to be on call. Um, they're expected to be on call minimum of six hours a week. So they get a $20 stipend, plus they get paid for their calls for that. And the salaries for uh, when they go out and do their calls. Ambulance fifty one ten. I have a okay. Uh, so is would twenty two thousand be enough for the on call? Yes. Uh, based on the call volume and the call volume increase. Yes. Fifty one ten. Employee support. Um, license renewals uh, for our our EMTs and paramedics. Uh, safety coats. CPR cards and uh, first responder cards, and then uh, clothing allowance for the EMTs for uniforms when they're on duty. Fifty-two hundred. Okay, so the top line here, ambulance reporting software. That's where I said in the fire reporting software we share. So that's a shared expense between two. Um, we use one software. It's actually the same software that the state uses for ambulance reporting. So it works pretty easily to for us to uh, report all our calls for the ambulance. But we use that for 
our patient care reports. We use it for fire reports. Uh, we use it for checklists for the trucks so that we keep our inventory on all our trucks in here and everything. It's a very good software. Um, and then everything, it, unfortunately, in today's world with medical, I have to have a user uh, agreement with service agreement with everything they do. When the state comes in, do our inspections, they want to see service agreements for everything. So mm -hmm. that way, um, when it has to be worked on, so like our cardiac monitors, cardiac monitors are over $25,000 each. Uh, the defibrillators are $2,000 each. Um, we have a service contract on it that will help pay for batteries. It, help, it, it covers it completely. Something happens with it. One of our cardiac monitors this fiscal year had a major malfunction in it, and the repair alone would have been $10,000 if we did not have the service agreement on it. Because we had the service agreement on it, it cost me zero. There you go. Makes sense. Thank you. Chief, on your line for the AEDs, is that absorbing the maintenance on the ones that are in the police cruisers as well? Yes. I know in the past it was done that way. Yes. So we had a blanket for all of them. Yes. I, so I, I, I cover every one of the fire departments, uh, AEDs. I, I take care of town hall and the senior center AEDs and the police cruisers AEDs. The only one that's not in here is the police is getting a new one because there was a grant for uh, physio control who makes the AEDs we use, had a grant and every community was able to get one. So we, um, the police are getting one, a new one for their cruiser. So that's not in here, but I, I will add that to it. Con continuing yep. what we've been doing for a number of yep. years, yes. I, I, so I, I take care of, I don't break that out and ask um, that Adam or Holly put the AED here on or the police, we actually, a lot of times they're using the, the AEDs in the cruisers because they'll get, you know, they're already out on the road. So depending on where the call is, um, they could be the first AED. So I want to make sure that those are covered, that, you know, that they're working properly. Um, so we, we cover all of those. Plus it's just easier for one person to do it. And you, uh, you cover all the replacement pads, I would assume for all the yes. AED ones. Yep. Um, something new. On here um, is technology support, the last item. Never had that before. We now have uh, more computers than we've had in the past uh, with the Wi-Fi in the buildings and everything. The When the police department came down and used our building for a year, you know, they outfitted us what's needed. This is now main to, to maintain what they created for us. Plus, we don't need... Uh, I'm hoping there's enough money in there in the future. Uh, we don't have a server, so everything is individual computers, not being able to share anything. So this is hopefully that we can add, if, if nothing breaks down computer-wise, this is hopefully to add a server to our, our system next year. And is all of this in, in, in integrated? Um, it's not departments going off and doing whatever they want IT wise, if, if they have the budget, then they get it. It's basically co a coordinated effort. So it's we, an integrated. We IT. go different than town hall. We fall with the police department. Okay. So we're falling underneath their stuff. Like they have sieges and different things. We're on a broadband loop with them. We have a closed network with them. for public closed safety. network. Okay. So our IT is different. Okay. But Holly's aware of, the, they talk, they communicate, okay. so. So yeah, we, we've never from been a side, even from a cyber perspective, we've got, um, it, it's cohesive. But, yeah. Yeah, all the other fire chief comes so up with Holly and the fire chief. Goals. So when I'm at the fire station, if I go to go online, I'm not going online from the fire station. I'm actually rooting all the way up to the police department through their firewalls and then out to the, okay. to the internet. Yeah. So I'm just a virtual safety. private network. Yeah. Safety. He, he gets the reminder emails too. Oh, yeah. You got mine the other day. I ever get on it. I think Jeff got a few of them too. What? The Sorry. cyber training? Yeah. And I did. did you Did you do yours? Yeah, I've been doing it. Uh, that's fun. One I've thing you're going to notice in here that I also did add because I don't know where life is taking us is uh, I do have $500 a lot of for COVID testing for our people. It cost me $50 a shot to get people tested. 
What kind of test? PCR test. Okay. We actually um, in Holden, our regional dispatching uh, CMED, they offer it there. So I can send, and it's public safety only. So I can normally send somebody almost same day if needed. And I know it's only $500, and you know, Lori, Lori is working behind you. Um, but uh, is there a way to just uh, eliminate what? I didn't make a face. <laughs> no. Is there a way to eliminate that expense, or are you just are, is, are you just trying to? Um, That's that. This is expense, a budget. I know that expense is there because I can't tell you, as no one can, what COVID is going to be right. next fiscal year, and if I have to COVID test people to stay, I can't just home test people to keep them working. Covered by insur like insurance, a, a PCR test. So now somebody gets exposed at work, you want them to use their personal insurance to I pay for it. Okay. I was just if it's an, if it's an outside it. exposure, they have to test to be able to work. But if it's a exposure at work, then I can test them. Got it. This is also a quicker process. So he gets the results pretty so they can test and stay. Okay. Understood. I'd rather not have it there. Trust me, I I, I don't want it there. Um but it's what it is in today's world, unfortunately. Anything else? 5,200? 5,400 supplies? So uh, supplies, like everything else, um, costs go up. We had a, a deal at Haywood. We get supplies at Haywood, um, and they've never billed us these supplies and that's changing mm. um don't know we were supposed to we've, we've never sent bills um and they finally picked up on that with there's a bunch of other agencies that that happens with in there they were supposed to change that this fiscal year um and i petitioned them to put it off until july because i didn't have that budgeted for what we get from them uh, our medications and so forth we get billed for but some of the other stuff we didn't so starting July 1, uh, they're coming out with a cost sheet uh, for us. And we've been looking for the best pricing. We've been tracking what we've been buying. So I knew how much to add. And um, so we've added here. So that medical supplies of 32,000 is, you know, what I hope to be a good number unless costs go up dramatically. So if, um, so when you, have a patient and you go to say hey with and whatever equipment you use on that patient is itemized bills to through coastal we do not itemize bill um itemized billing the insurance companies then have the ability to say my patient didn't need that i'm not paying for it so we lump bill so you yeah. lump bill as als and or BLS. yes but when you when you lump bill you're going to take into account obviously the other expenses that, that are being occurred yes. such as narcotic usage or other oxygen yeah. usage back to where yeah. okay right. for the benefit of those following at home and many many years in this and chief correct me if i'm wrong the change where haywood is not as uh, proactive and generous as they once were is not something new. Hospitals are getting away from that community support model that they once really embraced and funded for us. And it's not a surprise. In fact, the bigger surprise was they've done it for as long as they have. Correct. Having worked out in the right. Western part of the state with a whole different animal that went away six, seven years ago. So we were riding the coattails of an aging program. Yeah, they they used to be times that if I brought somebody in like a car accident victim or something and they had a collar on them, I could go into Haywood Supply, grab a call and take a sticker, put it on the patient's chart and they would get billed for that and I got the replacement. Mm -hmm. um, those days are yeah. long gone. Even um, like John is mentioning, like with the medications and narcotics, if I bring somebody in, we know what we used but it's not a one for one. We don't go up to their pharmacy and get a replacement for it then and there. We actually have to purchase the narcotics and medications and everything. And so it all goes through the billing and for the lump billing. No more free lunch, yeah. Thank you. Um, any other questions, 5400? I think 5700. 
Chief. So 5,700, the other account, um, we have our, you'll see now that the ambulance lease is in here. So this is coming out of EMS. Um, put down, we, uh, we're looking to build a storage closet. Right now, we have a lock cage for all of our ambulance supplies in the main building. Then in the back garage, because we have a separated garage, we have cabinets that we lock for our ambulance supplies. Um, the cabinets are failing, the, the lock has failed, the hinges for everything is failing. And at the cost of getting something that actually works, these cabinets are greatly expensive. Um, and I worked out with, uh, I had Mark from Highway, who's been doing a lot of the building repair and everything, work with me. And we feel we can, I can build a closet that will take care of both our ALS supplies and our BLS supplies and um, can for that will last a lot longer for roughly the cost of a couple of brand new cabinets. So it'd be much better. And then the last item on this is uh, ultrasounds. This is just like the hospitals use, doctors use, you know, to take an ultrasound. This is new technology that's being allowed to use in the ambulances. Um, they we can use them for, and Tim can explain a lot better than me being a paramedic, um, but for traumas and stuff to make sure the patients get to the correct destination, um, so forth. We're gonna be able to use those for uh, a lot of things. That cost there, it's not a one-time cost, it's a one-time cost to purchase the stuff, but built into that, the following year's budgets will show in purchase of services, we have to have a, a subscription for it too. So, understood. All right. Any questions for 5700 or fire PMS overall? Go ahead. Jim. Um, so, I noticed there's a lot of purchases, uh, typically equipment, clothing, um, even going back to the fire department budget where we're looking at hoods and, and bunker pants and so on and so forth. Who is um, the primary vendor that we're going through for some of these items, right? So if I did a quick Google search, I mean, I could go find surplus stuff, but that's not too, too code. Who's the vendor that we're using for fire? I use different vendors. Um, I have uh, oh, Northeast Supply. I can't remember that actual name. Mm -hmm. uh, New Hampshire. Okay. That we use a lot for um, turnout gear, uh, I daily, like our shirts and pants and stuff like that. Yep. I usually go out a few times a year and I get uh, pricing from all the vendors and okay. try to find who. It's not always the cheapest, it's the best gear for the best price. Right, and that's what you um, want in a situation, yes. especially with firefighting. Yes, I imagine you know, budget gear. Um, so you said Northeast Supply was one of them? North, Northeast Apparel, I believe, is the name. I don't really remember off the top of my head. All the comp most of the companies that we deal with, so we have them. They're really mainly clothing. I have uh, fire tech and safety that we buy uh, like our, our uh, equipment from. They also sell gear. Um, the company's uh, CS specialty that I bought the last fire truck from, they sell gear. There's lots of different companies that sell it. We deal with a few of them. Um, the company we're dealing with now, the Northeast, they've had the best pricing for the gear that the guys like. like okay. uh, lightweight, quality gear. Um, okay. And all of that, I'm going to sure, is going to go up dramatically when all the chemical, uh, all the cancer causing chemicals come out of it and they find a different way to protect us. Mr. Chair, just not that Dave would do this. Um, I did go through and look at all these these items and uh, they are in line with what we would see for you know standards. So for bunker yeah. codes, the pricing is all right. very similar in line. So I'm sure you took those quotes directly and, and applied them to your budget, but yes. all the individual itemizer. Chief, do you have the flexibility to, to do all that on your own or is Adam involved with it or do you have to use state vendor lists or I, anything? All my all my companies that I use are on state vendor list. Got it. Okay. Thank you for answering that question, John. My question would be is um there's accountability. Um does the town and yourself do you have accountability of all your durable equipment? We have um 
like bunker pants, jackets. Yeah, I'm not sure the phrase. So one of my one of my guys maintains inventory on who has what for equipment. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we take it right down to the gear, to the pager you're issued, um, to the radios and so forth. And also all the firefighter gear as well, such as like you know. Yep. So if you would sensor yeah. things, so like like all that stuff. The, the new person is starting Monday. Um, under union contract, they need to have two sets of turnout gear. Okay. Now I'm hoping to find an old set that fits them because I don't want to have two sets expire at the same time for somebody. What I my next question. Um, so we NFPA recommends that we have two sets of turnout gear for every person. And by budgeting 10 sets a year, what I've been trying what I've been working on getting is so that everybody has a new set of gear and a set that's like five years old. So when their gear is becoming five years old, that one set's expiring and we're getting another place. So it's it most bang for our buck. So awesome. Go ahead. Yeah. So uh, that raises an interesting question. Um, I forget which page the buyer budget is on, but um, when we're looking at what you requested for adding, I think it was three headcount, mm -hmm. um, are they receiving fire gear as well? Or are they just strictly paramedics? If they if so they would be firefighter paramedics and it, I would our numbers are down right now. So my 10 sets I can get every year would accompany me. So you have surplus gear to accommodate those. Well, as long as it fit into what I have actually right now. <laughs> as people leave and new people come in, yeah. I try to fit them with a set of used stuff that we have that's still serviceable mm -hmm. and then work from there okay and so i that's just something so there is nothing in the budget from your request that would be no okay. no if i'm looking for you know three more guys is not to outfit three more guys too because i have it built into my budget that as we're working i can absorb that okay thank you any, any last any last questions for fire I don't, I don't have a question, just uh, an observation from uh, a budgeting standpoint. Uh, separating out the ambulance and, and setting money aside, it, it started back in 2006. There was a revolving fund for one year. It was estimated it was going to take in $100,000. They brought in over 200000 the first year. The following year, the revolving fund went away and that money was just washed into the general fund. Mm -hmm. Town meeting would be asked for a debt exclusion for a new ambulance or stuff for the ambulance service. And it would be passed at town meeting when everybody can see who's raising whose hand, but when you went into the ballot booth, it would fail. Mm -hmm. And it's, to me, separating this out, not only gets back to, uh, the follow-up vote that happened after that revolving fund a number of years, uh, it was a vote at a special town meeting in 2011, began in 2013, to put ambulance receipts aside. Mm -hmm. And the intent was to fund the ambulance service. So he's not fighting, and I say fight, I mean, looking for a, all the other departments, including the fire and, and, and EMS for, capital money, yeah. which so far in the last four years has been free cash. Now there is a funding source uh, that I think he can cost right. out for the future. And I think the last financial, the expenditure report from the accountant for January is about 500 grand in ambulance receipts. Mm -hmm. To me, that allows him, us, town administrator, to cost out, okay, we're gonna spend 290 out of that this is what we have right now on the books. So the next budget cycle, oh yeah, the snow. Uh, he can already, the ambulance side is, to me, is a little easier. And when it comes time for another ambulance, uh, he's not going to be in here fighting. He can go to Capitol and say, either all of it can come out of ambulance receipts or 250 comes out of here and this has to come from taxation or some other thing. So uh, I, I think it's going to allow him to run that sir. department a lot better. Because I look at it as a separate department from the fire fire department, the EMS, uh, look at the calls. It's 
twice as many EMS calls as fire, maybe, I don't know, 10 more or something. And that trend has been going that way for a number of years. So and, and when I, to expand a little on that, when I became chief, uh, the one thing Carter asked me to do with the EMS funding was to not, you know, we were bringing in 250,000 a year when I took over as chief through the town's goodwill of giving, starting us full time and getting us the help we needed, covering more calls, more billing. We are now in the area of 400,000 a year that we're bringing in. We, um, and with Carter's help and now with Adam's himself, that fund is not being just killed every year so that we have this much money and then July 1, we have no money because it's now funding us. Um, there is a real possibility that the next ambulance will be able to buy cash. It won't be that's, that's that's beautiful. Cost yeah. out the savings of financing on that and yep. it's big, big benefit to the town. So. Just looking at the time, John. Yeah, yeah. no, my, I just quit. I mean, obviously the ambulance we, the water slide, I think it was in 2017, voted on the ambulance rates from mm -hmm. ALS and BLS. I'm sure they're going to be coming back for the increase of ambulance rates based on that, which will also increase your ambulance or seats receivable, I, yeah. I would assume. Yeah, Adam yeah. does work with the chief, uh, you know, by, you know, by policy, yeah. he's, he's got to come back to us. To, you know, Last rates. year it came back and the yeah. board voted uh, not to raise ambulance rates. Um, they did. And then um, when it comes up again, uh, this calendar year, I'll have all that figures and That's everything right. to bring back and show what the rates are in the area and where we're at and what my recommended changes would be. I mean, I'd be advised to, I'd love to see that. Go ahead. Uh, two questions for Larry, one for you, Adam. Um, for the EMS receipts, um, are those, those are not allowed to be used for fire, right? It's just for the ambulance on the EMS side? Well, we, we use it for the ambulance, the attended purpose. Yeah. Um, the, the goal here, and the chief and I talked about it, and. Um, and the folks here know um, we've been dependent with our capital out of our free cash, but our free cash is steadily going down. So we're looking for other sources. So the chief and I talked about this at length and by us being able to break this out, uh, it was a recommendation of budget dwell from last fiscal year. Uh, we're gonna be able to utilize like when the chief needs an ambulance, we're not gonna have to go out and put a lease, which is recurring debt onto the books. We'll be able to hopefully purchase it cash. So it's really, an, the intention is to keep that money, use it for the ambulance, and really build up that department, if you will. It wasn't um, transparent before. Now it is. So you you could have, by virtue of it going through the general fund, you could say, "Oh, that's being used for fire," because you wouldn't have had anything to say to the to the contrary. Now the transparency it, it exists to be able to say. A dollar spent here is, is being appropriated here or, or you, you know where it's being generated. Right. So my follow-up question to that is, is there any fire personnel that use the ambulance or anything from the EMS services? Are they not use the ambulance, but they, they don't work the ambulance? Yes, yes. my, my full-time staff are firefighter paramedics. Right, so you're, you're dedicating the ambulance receipts to cover the EMS budget, but your EMS budget is not including any of the fire personnel that you are including in the fire budget. Correct. So going back to what I'm suggesting here is if the ambulance receipts were 400,000 and you have a budget of, I don't know what it was, 200,000? I mean, there there is you know, allocations that would need to be done to bring those receipts into there to compensate, right? So you can most likely get headcount from your ambulance receipts. Right? And this is where I'm against splitting out the ambulance receipts for particularly just ambulance, because you have a department that is not just here's an EMS way over across town and here's your fire department. You have a shared service center for fire and, and EMS services. So by partitioning the budget like that into two separate line items and restricting your ambulance receipts just for your EMS, but not including the costs of what your fire department is running into those EMS, you're really understating what, what it is there for expenses and you're offsetting it by ambulance receipts that should be headed to your fire department budget in total. It, 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 they're, they're shared in there as well, but as far as, I think that they could answer that to say, here's the overall capability that like it's where you're, I understand what you're saying, splitting it out isn't showing the, the real picture. 
Well, at least the costs are right. You have a single right. source of income for right. the but I, you're I would, I would think if costs. okay, sorry. Um, I, I would think if, if asked, he could provide that that information. But for the necessity of this budget, it was better to like like Jeff was saying, it's better to present it like this. And if I can, Mr. Chair, I might be losing the vote. So the chief and I wanted to break this out and Kim, you are right. I mean, there's a certain percentage of calls that his firefighter paramedics do take, but we want to have an accurate picture and break that out of, let's say when we go through this fiscal year, there could be an opportunity where we could break out those personnel expenses onto the ambulance side of the house. Mm -hmm. Let's say his firefighter paramedics on average take 70% of ambulance calls. Well, then we could split the 30% keep that in the fire next year and then put 70% of the personnel cost onto the ambulance side of the house. Cause you do bring up a, a good point. Right. If there's an intercompany transaction that's taking place. There. But, yeah, exactly. but, but the budget due out for this year was to really, this will be the first year or two of getting this started. And the chief really wants to gauge where his ambulance receipts lands. So we don't want to drain it either. So it's that delicate balance. We're trying to. Right. But, but get to can I not so, truly, oh, sorry, we're, we're a little bit over right now. Um, I, if, if we, we can definitely take the time to go through this, but we're about 40 minutes behind schedule. Do, do we want to just uh, give it like two, uh, another minute to wrap it up? Well, Mr. Chair, I, I think this is more of an accounting conversation. I mean, okay. I agree with, with Chief Dickey's budget assumptions in total between them. So it's just a, exactly, yeah, exactly. The geographic. But if, if you just want to finish up your thought, that that's no, fine. That's just, I didn't. I didn't want someone else to jump in afterwards. But did you think about this? Yeah. The only the only thing is, is I just personally I feel with the way these allocations are because they're non-existing, right? So if you have fire personnel that belong to the ambulance receipt, say it was just even at a 50-50 split, right? You're you're understating your EMS budget. Mm -hmm because you're not taking into account the 50% use of resources from your fire department budget. Yeah, I didn't realize. So when we look at ambulance receipts in the offset, it's like, yeah, great, we have a budget to budget here, but where it's, it's understated. And so it's not really anything indicative of the total cost of EMS. That's really where I'm going with it. So this, again, we can take this offline. It's, right. like, it's an accounting thing, right? To get right. So you're, if, when you look at, I'm looking at uh, page 29, the overall. Yep. yep. So when I look at that, I'm not getting the full picture when I look at the fire line is what you're saying. So your, your fire line is overstated because you're, you're accounting for EMS costs in your fire department because you're looking at headcount there. Okay. And then your EMS is understated because you're not including headcount that's included in the fire department that should be there. Now you can't just say, oh, well, let's split personnel because that's just not realistic. So what you would do is allocate. And that's what Adam was saying is 70% is fire and 30% is EMS. You take 30% of all the costs related from the fire department and move that to the EMS budget through an intergovernmental. Uh, inter I'm not I'm not in business right now. We're in, we're in government, so intergovernment. And so you'd say, here's all your pools of costs that are related to both and take that at 70% of the fire department mm -hmm. and 30% to the EMS. Now, all the costs of the fire department are not going to be relevant to EMS and EMS is not only going to be relevant to the fire department. At the end of the day, it's accounting. But if we looked at it in total, mm -hmm. with what the total cost breakout would be for fire and EMS together and offset that by receipts, you'd get a better accuracy of, are we running deficit to receipts or not? Okay. That's Okay. But there's other extenuating things like payroll we would have to get. So that's going to be something that we're going to have a budget due out for next fiscal year. But this this gets us a start. Um, so I, I I know what you're saying, and we're getting there. Any any, fi any final questions? None. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> Chief, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you. All right, next up uh, is development services. That is, um, let's see, page 98 print and 107 uh, in your PDF guide. Um, or you can start out with, uh, you can go right to your 5100 or you can give an introduction. Either way. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Thank you. For Sorry, I know we're running, we're now 45 minutes behind. Sorry about that. That's okay. Not a problem. Um, the only thing I just, I wanted to say, um, and Adam and I have been through the budget a lot, is 
I was looking for another full-time employee. I wanted to bring up a, a part-time or two full-time. And that is probably, I'm going to look at it again next year. Just one way. Um, I'm finding that we need more expertise in planning, zoning, and conservation. And we're finding that we can't just do it with a part-time. Right. A lot of training involved. So, and, and that's due to having to know mass DEP regulations inside and out, making sure your committee members, board members are following all regulations. Okay, so the, um, the breadth of what the office needs to be able to provide, if, are you dealing with volume as well? We are dealing with volume. Um, the building boom is still going on. Um, we did have a little break for a couple of weeks, which was nice. Uh, but land is selling like hotcakes still. Everything that's available is being bought and they want to put a house on everything. So um, it's just future. Just give you a great. Thing. Thank you. Um, All right, we're, uh, we're looking at one, uh, your 5100. So this is easy for you guys because there's not a lot of change. Uh, we're gonna maintain our part-time and full-time people right now. Our inspectors are paid out of their fees, um, our electrical and plumbing and gas. And unless you have any questions, there's not a lot there. Mr. Chair, yep, please go ahead. Inspection fees, that's being paid out of the, uh, their services that they're inspecting, correct? Correct. Are they still at the, are they $50 inspection fees now? Um, actually, the inspection fees range. Uh, we have a fee schedule, and we're actually going to be working on that because yes. you all just voted our peer communities again. So the two girls in the office will be calling the peer communities to find out what others, and we'll come before you if there's any changes. Yeah, yeah and there is because I took some of that work already. Great. Yeah. Feel free to so, share. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, that is on our agenda. I um, mistakenly skipped over it. So when we come back from lunch, uh, we'll, if time wise and everyone's good with that, we can we can address that right after sure. lunch. Sorry about that, everyone. Thank you. Great. Anything else? Fifty one hundred. So if, you, if I can, Mr. Chair, the fees this year, you know, every year we look at a different department uh, development services is up to review their fee schedule. Um, so once those comparison communities get adopted, uh, Lori and her staff will be going through and making sure that they're up to par with our other com com communities. Thank you. All right, I think we can move to 5110. With the exception of the last couple of years, not having the usual annual conference and training, um, and I don't think those do it again this year in person. Not much has changed. Um, we decided, or Adam and I talked about the lump sum disallowed based on last year's leftovers. So uh, otherwise, it's pretty much the same. Um, the MAC training, they've been pretty good about taking the training, which is the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Commissions. So the current three member board has been good. Any questions? Oh, you hand off. I thought it was <laughs> 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 All right, let's move to 5200. Okay. So there are pretty much in 5200 things stay the same there are some increases we're lucky with the landfill well monitoring we have mark popham an engineer who works for us um, that's pretty much stayed the same it is a requirement of mass dep that that be done he does all the reports for us Massachusetts public health network i would have definitely sunk over the last two years if i didn't have them helping us um, Landfill cap mowing, that's also a requirement of Mass DEP. Sealers, those are all standard fees. With rabies and testing and wetlands consultant, we have a little bit of play there. Um, it's all based on if we have anything come up. So that's an average. Okay. 
looking at the average cost of, the, of your services and your, your lump sum disallowed, um, it looks like you have some, some wiggle room, but not a lot. We had some wiggle room and we're going to cross our fingers that rabies is way down this year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just never know. Mr. Chair. But yeah, mowing, does the town do the mowing or is it contracted out? It's actually contracted out. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, usage of that property for solar panels, was that ever brought up? It was, and there wasn't enough square footage on the top of the cap to be able to do it and make it worth anything. Some supporting documentation. Fifty four hundred. Oh, fifty four hundred. Really, our supplies is mostly postage. A lot of things that we do rely on the fact that we are mandated to do certified mail. Certified mail keeps going up, um, and we use a lot of paper with paper and ink with our boards. And we did have playroom. So Adam and I did talk about the lump sum disallowed. And I think we've talked about it before. It's not, it's not a place where you can go uh, go digital or go you know electronic. As much as it might be great, it's just it's not feasible for your office. I have tried sending things to board and committee members electronically. Um, they did use it a little bit more when they were at home and had to do things remotely, but I found that they still dropped by the office to pick up paper copies too. Yeah. It, it's difficult, I think, to, especially when it's like site planning, when you have a plan that's, you know, yeah. this big and mm -hmm. you get it electronically and then you're looking at it. Yeah. You know, it's, okay. a lot of our members are not technically savvy. Right. Um, but paper is a big deal. It may, it may be like a, a long range plan um, you know, to maybe get tablets or something like that, like uh, town funded equipment so that they want you have some standardization, you don't have to worry. Because it, one, one's becoming a headache, headache for you as well to say, you're already managing them in the office. If you have to try and manage them digitally, it could be even diff more difficult. Maybe a long range plan uh, after, you know, years, years, and you wind up having a different generation come through that says, I'd rather have this on a tablet or something. Right. Actually, one of our goals for 23 is to do more electronically. I mean, I we do oh, a good. lot of a lot of permitting. I send the permits out electronically, um, rubbish, food, everybody that can get it through email and print it themselves and fill it out and bring it in, great, mm -hmm. you do that. Rhonda is currently researching uh, electronic permitting for building and inspecting. Uh, so we'll be looking at that future too. But yeah. Okay. All right, any questions 5400? I think that was your last. It was. All right. You're right. We made up some time then. Yeah. Kind of. It's still 15 minutes. 20 minutes. Sorry. I think we'll be able I blame that on Deep Dickie. So. Any, uh, <laughs> any last, last questions for uh, development services? Feel free to stop by. We're looking for conservation members too. Uh -huh. We have openings. Okay. Did anybody sit down? No. No, they're just then. Yeah. Yeah, been like. Laurie, thank you very much. Thank you Appreciate very much. Thank Welcome you. back, Cam. <laughs> it's good to be back. It is good. To be back. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hi. How are you? Okay. So Jeff is on remotely for sewer. Okay. Jeff, Jeff, do you have your uh, camera on or? Uh, can you hear me? We can hear, can you, hear you, but we can't see you. Uh, first, I'm doing this. I got to find it. <laughs> okay, it should be in the corner there, the yes. camera. Kelly, it's in the lower left. Kelly, it's in the corner, right? You're always remote, so. Yeah, it's down in the far I can see lower left there. hand. Far lower, lower left. Sewer. Okay. Lower left. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. There we go. Hi, Jeff. Excellent. Um, what page are we going to here? Uh, section Section six. So page 244. I think that should be, yeah. So 250, if, if you have the electronic version, it's page 253. Otherwise, it's 244. So this is Jeff's first uh, presentation okay. since he's taken over uh, budget since uh, he became the sewer superintendent. Okay. So with, uh, I don't know, uh, Jeff, were you um, listening in for uh, Lori? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So in the budget book, you've got your um, you have your intro and, and things like that. I give you the opportunity if you want to address those. If not, we can jump right into your uh, 5100. Yeah, I'm all set with the 5100. Okay. You, uh, you do have an overview sheet. I see that. Um, but uh, let's see what page number is that? So if you could start us off on page 248 with your 5100. Uh, it's basically the personnel. It's all the wages, uh, pretty much like everybody else's. Um, got increases in anticipation of union negotiations. We got one guy that's a laborer. He's going to be getting his license, jumping up to operator. So he'll jump up a whole pay scale plus uh, his step, um, his yearly step in the uh, scale. And other than that, that's about all that one really is. Any questions for Jeff? All enterprise funded, correct? Correct. Okay. 5110. Uh, pretty much employee support. It's just the dues, our, our licenses, any meetings or trainings, the uniforms. Uh, mileage and tolls, which is, I don't think we use any this year. Pretty simple. That hasn't changed at all. Any questions? All right, uh, 5,200. Uh, services, we've went up on a few things. Legal, we went up 5,000. There's a uh, Cardia pump station is a property issue there. Adam's handling. So there's 5,000 extra for that, what he's going to handle. We went up 21.7 in the contractor services for the treatment plant. We got some pumps that are original that weren't touched during the upgrade in 06 that I'd like to get completely either rebuilt or replaced, send them out. And we have our accepted receiving tank is due for its cleaning. It's not something that has to get done every year. It's due to be emptied right out, contracts come in, vac it, all that. Um, engineering for the roof, it's going to get looked at. And then pump station contractor services, that's up 25 grand because with our new permit, we have to have an O&M plan developed and it has to be done by, I believe, March of 24. So that's a good chunk of that money. I think it's about 16,000 to have that done. And then I want to... Uh, get into a more of a schedule um cleaning out our wet walls with like a vac truck i want to try and do them all this year and get in a regular schedule with it and with the o m plan there's going to probably be more costs of stuff that has to be make sure it's done on a regular basis whether you can go you know it's it, we're gonna have to follow it period whether it needs it or not some things so we added to that just basically for that and that's about all there is to changes in that category. If there's any questions, no, it doesn't look like you got any questions on 52. Okay, 5400. Before basically all our supplies, we went up 5,000 for pump stations, pots, and equipment. Um, pump stations, some of them are getting older. We got one that. I want to get some more spare parts for up 10,000 for wastewater treatment plant equipment and parts. We got our valve actuators are now 15, 15 years old. They're going to become obsolete at some point. We'll slowly have to start changing them out to the newer um, actuator. You won't be able to get the old ones. And we have a couple of valves that are outside that are constantly freezing the, their air valves. 
So the moisture, they freeze either open or closed. So we had to build this January a little hut to go around them. We want to make something a little more permanent that we can maybe put heat in it or just an insulated hut just so when it gets in our January temperatures, the valves will stop because basically you're calling someone in at two, three in the morning to either, either burns the motor out, which are about $1,700, or you got to sit there and work the valve and get it unthawed. So hopefully that will cure that. Otherwise, pretty much nothing's changed there. It's all about the same. And that's about that one. I've I got a question. I'm not sure if it's more for you or for Adam. Or, um, well, actually, Kelly's in the room with us now as well. Um, these are very, you know, they're all even numbers. Um, how close have you, for, for when you estimate how, you know, what's the margin? Are you getting this 90% correct? Or, or, I mean, are these going coming in pretty much right at those figures? And that's what they're based on? Uh, I I did the increases. Bob McDonald actually created Bob, Bob created the actual budget before he left, and I did the increases and stuff because we had to make some changes. So why I just kept the even numbers when I raised them? It's it's you know it. I'm more curious because it's, it's really a silly question where we're talking about an enterprise fund because it, you know anything that they don't use, it's not like we're trying to trim or something like that. I just wondered, you know, um, budgeting wise, how they've been historically if they're pretty pretty good about it. They've been doing really well. Um, you know, I mean, like this year is an extreme challenge, and I think next year is going to be the same with the cost of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, look at gas right now. You know, who long knows how long that's going to take. Um, with all the different increase of, of things, even supplies. Yeah. Um, you know, like they're talking about building that hut, you know, what would have cost, you know, little money, you know, a couple of years ago may cost huge money now. Yeah. So, I mean, at the, this point, this budget's kind of hard because okay. we really don't know how much things are going to increase. Mm -hmm. But usually they're pretty right on. They awesome. do very good budgeting. And if I can say too, they actually they ended up in the black too this the last yeah. fiscal year. Mm -hmm. So they, they've been doing budgeting quite well uh, yeah. with mm -hmm. the revenues and their expenditures. So well, the, the way that Jeff's briefing it, it sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when I added the five and ten thousand, I just I kind of rounded up to even numbers because that's how Bob pretty much had everything, and is basically what I did. Bob had a great system. He really but it, rebate. Yeah. All Trying to follow his, it's, it's, I mean, it's all kind of an estimate on some of that, yep. especially this year. Uh, Jeff, let's go 5,600 intergovernmental. Yep. Uh, most of these numbers are water's up 2,000 just to adjust a little bit. Um, kind of thinking gas and diesel is going to probably want that more than water, but we'll see. Uh, basically, uh, that's about it on that. Everything's about the same. And then the numbers that come from town hall. Have, has the uh, Gardner um, number remained about the same? The 50,000? 50, yeah. I think we were, the last time I saw it was like 60 or something. Is that something that stays the same or? Jeff and I had a conversation. That's going to be, uh, Jeff, if you wanted to kind of touch base upon the Gardner upgrade, <laughs> Jeff, like, because you've been kind of, you gave me an update on that the other day. So, okay. Yeah. With the Gardner upgrade, we pay, we pay whatever percentage we use of that treatment plant. So if, if our flow is 3% of that plant, we pay 3% of the cost to run that plant. So when you do an upgrade, we pay 3% of the cost of the upgrade. So basically Bob had set up with him $50,000 a year. I believe it was for six years. That, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. yeah they didn't they didn't need the whole money up front. In fact, he had said we could go lower or less if we wanted. Um, I just left it right at fifty thousand. What do you what number do you think we are? What year? For the yeah. year? No. This is like the year two, I think. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I believe this will be the second year. Second year. Got it. I believe. All right. Any other questions? Fifty six hundred? Hearing none, 5,700. Uh, capital, we are looking to replace our 91 Ford tractor with a bucket um, and the uh, replace it with a, another one, obviously, with a bucket with a flail mower and finish mower. 
Uh, we use it for we maintain the easements. Our lawn's pretty big, so it'd be helping out mowing the lawn and all that. And then the, we use the tractor a lot because the loader is comparable to highways loader. And it's too big for a lot of little things around the plant. It's like a bull in a china shop. And that tractor that we have now was bought by the paper mill way back in my second year there in 91. So it's more than paid for itself. It's leaks and it's, it's time to go. Yeah. And, and then uh, cardiac pump station, looking to design to replace that, hopefully in fiscal 24. So it's 130,000 for that, for the uh, design of that. And I did fill out an opera form for that also. The pump, the pump. No, I was just going to also let Jeff and I had a discussion um, after the budget was released. There's a couple items from last fiscal year that need needs a additional of uh, the transformer and what was the other one, the recirc water system, Jeff. So we're going to yes. add capital. It was already presented to capital last fiscal year, um, but Jeff just found out. Uh, luckily, he caught it with when we were talking, and they'll need some additional funds. If you kind of want to discuss that Jeff really quick just so they when they see it in the article they, sure. they're aware. sure the uh the transformer job of course with price going price going through the roof the cost of wire I believe the wire alone cost is like 18 grand I think originally it would have been down around 10 the cost of wire went through the roof um so we're short we end up being short I believe uh 12,000 maybe 14,000 so we put in for 15 just to make sure to cover it and the water research unit, the budget was 20,000. The unit's 29. Um, Bob originally was going for 30. And when he submitted his budget last year, we realized he somehow changed it to 20. So it oh, should have been 30 all along. And with the price of the increase in unit of the water unit, the 30 was supposed to cover install and everything. And the unit actually came in, the bids came in at 29. So I'm putting in for was it 20 Adam? I think I don't have Adam that written in front of me. 15,000. I thought Jeff. 15 is a transformer. I know that. Yeah. So anyways, I, yeah, it was 20 because it was 10 short 20 to cover the install of it and everything and not have to take the install out of our budget, which is what we're originally going to try and do when we realized it came in at the full 30. So sewer so we'll have items for capital um, on, at the annual town meeting warrant. Yes. But the, these were capital items that were already presented to capital before. So okay. just so you're aware of it. Yep. And then the wastewater roof is potentially in the fall. We're going to uh, have the engineer that Adam deals with go over that our roof also because it's leaked since as long as I've been there, which is coming up on 32 years. And it's been a fight. The architect, the architect says with Templeton with the roofs, spending mm -hmm. a lot of time over here. Yes. And that's about sums it up. I don't have any questions for Jeff. Anyone else? Uh, I don't have a question, just a comment. I, I looked at this morning uh, the sewer department's retained earnings, which is like the town's free cash. And for the past four years, they've been steady, like 170000 or so. It's been, I mean, steady. So, and so that's where they take question, some of their yeah. capital out of. So, it's their budget is. Uh, Pretty, pretty good. Pretty, pretty awesome. Steady, pretty yes. okay. Jeff, thanks very much for uh, joining us today. Oh, not a problem. I thank you for letting me be remote. I appreciate it. Yeah, it worked. We, we got our uh, we got our processes uh, fairly well um, honed down now. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Have a great day. Have a good day. Thanks, Jeff. Right, bye bye. Bye bye. All right, let me check our schedule. We're ahead of schedule. We're ahead of schedule now, <laughs> which is awesome. Um, all right, so time now is 11.50. Um, we, we are on lunch. Um, we're gonna break for lunch. Um, so we could recess to 12.30? Yep. And if, if I don't know what the recommendation to, to deal with the, the, the comparison communities. Um, the, the major architect of that was, was, it, was it John? Uh, no, it was it was you. All right, and this this one's actually um, it needs to be reprinted. This isn't the one that uh, needed to be printed. So got it. There is a reprint because yeah. the numbers on here. Okay. Are those. All right. Oh, we, we will we, we will go into that. Huh? Huh? Yeah.
I mean, yeah. unless you wanted to. It, I, I mean, if we got it on the, the, it was my fault that I jumped over it. We should have done. Oh, it's already on the agenda. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's on it. So if we, when we come back, um, I don't, I don't want to automatically put us uh, behind schedule, but I want to make sure that we're we're working it back in. Okay. All right. So um, seizing the opportunity, we're gonna. I'll go ahead and uh, entertain a motion to uh, have a lunch recess. Sure. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I'm going to lunch. Anything I might have missed from our morning session? Okay. On the motion to uh, brief recess for lunch, how do you um, all in favor say aye? Aye. Right. Any opposed? Hearing none, we will are we are adjourn, uh, recess for lunch. CCTV's gonna throw up the slide this way.